This is very serious. We've had a murder. We've had several. And Tom Petty died. Treat this with the love and respect that you would. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I kept asking Lacey, who the heck is Tom Petty? <clears throat> you think you're white. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I am your host, Chris. We are you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves. We explain to you what is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Essentially, we make you sound smarter when you talk to your friends. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and subscribe on Patreon at wearelibertarians.com. In exchange for supporting our program, we give you all kinds of bonus content and freebies. We're always taking your comments and questions via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If you are new to the program, we catch up for the first few minutes and then deep dive into analyzing current events in society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults by semi-adults, so please be warned, the language is strong and offensive. Now, we have uh, quite the show. I don't know who to introduce first because now Me. on Me. Tuesday's shows, my, my co-host is Harry. I, I get introduced first, even though like uh, the other guy uh, who... Until you know someone says his name, he can't talk. Um, try to sabotage me with this beer that has given me the incredible hiccups. I don't even <laughs> can't even like trying to recover over here. Okay. Now Harry Price, you uh, you, and then on uh, Greg, like the <laughs> the autist that yes, he Greg. is, yes, Greg has his hand up. Greg Lenz, how are you, Mr. Price? I'd like to answer the first question <laughs> on the test. <laughs> Go ahead, Greg. I'm doing well. I'm excited to be invited here. You know how Harry is about his little fiefdom. Yes, Harry. Harry is a uh, very particular. separate but equal about his little fiefdom. Right. I only allow on here because he gets in the trello mines once in a while exactly right i go down and dig for stories in the trello mines uh also joining us is justin hutchinson justin who we affectionately refer to as flat bill because of his flat build hats all the time uh justin how are you doing i'm doing great how are you today i'm doing fantastic thanks for joining us you're wearing a lovely t-shirt today yeah, I'm repping the 7.62 uh, rounds on my shirt. Now, listen, every time we do a show where guns are discussed, the comment inevitably is, could you get somebody on there who's fired a gun? Because you and, and Greg don't know shit about guns. Guilty <sighs> as charged. Have you ever even fired a gun, Greg? I have. I okay. have. I've actually fired an AR-15. We were blowing up uh, rubber pumpkins and squirrels on a bachelor party. It was a great time. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, we're going to talk about some gun stuff tonight, but we wanted to have uh, somebody on who uh, is, you, you, you said, listen, I'm no expert, but I, I own a couple guns, right? That's correct. I, I, I have a fair share. Yeah. Now... Uh, you ran for what office in 2016 for the Libertarian Party? I ran for uh, local government here, Franklin Township uh, Advisory Council. Um, I gave it my all. I only spent 100 bucks. I got 30% of the vote, which was about 27% better than four years ago when they had the Challenger. So uh, Nice. It was a great overall experience. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, but I've been taking a year off of politics until uh, you hit me up today. Yeah. And invited me in. <laughs> yeah. You actually let me make some propaganda for your campaign. I did. Greg, uh, yeah, we were going to build a wall. Around and, uh, Franklin Township. We are going to build a wall around Franklin Township and keep all the Yandy people out. We were tired of Marion <laughs> County coming down and, you know, working and then taking their money back to the to their, you know, families in Marion County. And so you just needed to build a wall. And people right. really, re they responded. Uh, Unigov's a crock of shit. Exactly. Sure is. <laughs> he made Franklin Township great again. Destroys things. So, Justin, somebody we wanted to have on for a, a long while, and we've just never done it before, and so we're happy to have you here tonight. And uh, and then we'll, you know, your shirt is very fitting and uh, very aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Very aggressive, but I like it. It was unintentional. I kind of feel like you walked up to the border in a Make America Great Again hat and just... That's the equivalent of what you've got on right now, given the circumstances. If you were Mexican, you would not be going home tonight. You'd be going straight to jail. I mean, it's... <laughs> In people's faces. I don't care. <laughs> now, now, go check out our YouTube channel if you want to see what Justin and, is wearing in his flat bill hat. Harry, I don't know what the hell is on your shirt. What is that? It's Doramon. What is Doramon? You never, you never watched Doramon when you were a kid? It's a little, never. It's a children's um, animated uh, TV show. It's really okay. cool. Um, he does all, all kinds of adventures, gets in trouble, teaches, you know, like, life lessons. Okay. You should watch Doramon more often. I don't know, even know where I would begin to find a Doramon. Uh, you can get Doramon on Crunchyroll. 
Okay, what is that? Uh, Crunchyroll is like Netflix, but for um, anime or people who like Asian like videos and stuff like that. I like Asians. There's a lot I like of Asian, that on there. and I like Asian videos. Mm-hmm. Do they have those on there? Yeah, they have those Asian vi- videos. If you're talking about like Asian <laughs> soap operas, like uh, Korean shows, and that's stuff exactly like that. what I'm talking about. Korean soap operas. Now, if you are looking, they use soap. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you are looking, how dare you? The Koreans are a clean people. Yeah. Very. Korea is like uh, the uh, America of the East. Yes. There's like, a... <laughs> like from everywhere I've noticed is like any place an American probably could go with, go with because like an American had to go to Japan, you'd probably hate it. You you'd right. suck there. But like in Korea, you know, they're loud. They're kind of dirty. They're basically Americans. Yeah, they're basically the 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 best of them over there. <laughs> Dang straight. <That's>... Right. <laughs> they're, all... they're the fun. I mean. Yeah, they're fun people. <laughs> right. Oh, <okay? laughs> uh, well. So... And uh, the one thing I would want to say is Unigov is awesome in this <laughs> one point here is because it has made these uh, small territories between different um, parts of the city. And if you live in those lines, it's awesome. That's the only good thing about Unigov, other than that it sucks and has ruined it. In L- let me explain what Unigov is for the 98% of people who don't live in Marion County. Basically, in uh, Dick Luger, who was our senator, was the mayor in the 70s, and he and the city county council combined the county and the city into one government, and it became Unigub. So uh, Dick Luger was a forward-thinking, wonderkin mayor, according to most people. Indianapolis has been blessed with a lot of good mayors. The so. small, small government conservative that did the centralizing of power. Exactly right, yeah. <laughs> it's an Indiana Shocked tradition. got primaried and lost. Right. <laughs> All right, so enough grab ass for this show. Uh, <laughs> enough grab ass. We've got, we got a, a very serious, serious show to to talk about tonight. We we invited Greg from Thursday to come on on Tuesday mm-hmm. because we felt that it, we didn't want to wait and get Greg's opinion uh, until Thursday. You and Harry were going back and forth today and had a great discussion. And I was like, you know, I'd rather you guys do this on the air in front of everybody but me. You know, like. Uh, more than one person should be able to hear this. So I figured I'd have you come on instead of asking Harry to come to Thursdays. We asked you to come to Tuesdays. The first. You were summoned. I'm always doing the inviting. Right. At last. (laughs) He's treating you like you treat Cat. How do you feel about that, buddy? I feel like I need a safe space with my <laughs> AO Piandas. <laughs> Go back to Thursday. In South Korea. <laughs> now, Cat is doing a little better. We need you to keep praying for Cat. Her, she needs, uh, listen, she has a disease that only attention will cure. She's uh, also got bronchitis. Uh, but your thoughts and prayers earned her a spot on the BSU AO Pi Instagram. And so she was very excited about that and made her feel a little bit better. So thank you for your thoughts and prayers. But remember, keep praying, hashtag pray for cat, uh, and uh, keep giving her the attention that she needs. Right, Greg? Hmm? We have a cat? <laughs> we have a cat. <laughs> three cats? <laughs> three cats. <laughs> so hopefully a uh, cat will be back Thursday. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> be great. Good times. <laughs> hey, listen up. Stop. Hmm. Why well, you said she did comedy, you know, your regular thing, and I realized she was a sales intern once I heard her comedy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's let's jump into what happened in Las Vegas. Uh, obviously, it was. Uh, we'll we'll briefly for anybody listening who doesn't really know what happened. I can't imagine that there's many of you. We'll give you a detailed uh, breakdown of it, but. In many ways, I will tell you that this was the first national tragedy that really affected me since 9-11 in an emotional way. Uh, Sandy Hook was an emotional thing, but I wasn't as connected for whatever reason. I don't know if it was however many videos there were out there uh, over this. It just was um, very uh, tough to watch. And at one point, driving in yesterday morning, just listening to the audio on CNN on satellite radio... I started to just tear up. I mean, and so I think there's a lot of you out there who really feel the same way. And I spent most angry. And, you know, as a person who watches the news and and politics so often, not a lot really gets me in, you know, I, it's just kind of like whatever. So I've, I've been around it for so long that I've just kind of become 
callous to everything, but this got me. And not just this, but also everyone's response on social media pissed me off so much. Uh, it, it just was so self-centered and annoying. So let's start off with what happened. Um, if you, Justin, if you back that mic up just a tad, or you can sit back when you're not talking, that, that might help there. He called you a mouth breather. I can't help it. No, it, it, it's it's just that he's so close. That mic is so sensitive, so yeah. it doesn't matter who it was. So, um, I like Lindsay's feelings. <laughs> so sensitive. Dainty. Sometimes the heaviest burdens we carry are not our weight, <laughs> but our feels. Right. <laughs> uh, so a killer. Uh, we, we won't name him. You can go look it up if you really need to know his name. But you know, we tend to not try to memorialize these guys. Uh, the killer, sixty-four years old, white male massacred 59 people from his hotel room at the Mandalay Bay. He was on the 32nd floor, shooting down about 400 yards into a crowd of around 22,000 people attending a Jason Aldean concert. Uh, and he had 23 guns. I have seen upwards of, uh, he had 40 guns total and 23 in the room. Ammunition littering the floor, and he had killed himself as the police entered the building. Now, once the shooting started, and you've probably seen the video, CNN, it's like the only piece of video that they seem to have, was off stage, and Jason Aldean is playing, and then off he runs off stage, and that's when panic really set in. Because pe most people thought it was fireworks. It's Las mm -hmm. Vegas. And then, you know, Jason Aldean, when he ran off stage, they realized it was serious and started seeing bodies start to fall. And then police, you know, this, this they had adequate security. Mm -hmm. They had adequate police coverage. They had people going through metal detectors and pat-downs before they walked into the venue. So security-wise, there isn't anything they could have done differently. And police started to put together where the shooting was coming from. There weren't muzzle flashes from that 32nd floor by all accounts that I've seen. Uh, and, and obviously anything that we say tonight is, you know, as far as we know and – this is the night of October 3rd. This happens Sunday. This is a Tuesday. Uh, this is Sunday night at 10 p.m. in Las Vegas uh, in, I think they're on Mountain Time? Yeah. Uh, mountain Time. So two hours behind us. So, yep. um, so the police start to put together where it's at. The smoke detectors actually go off in Mandalay Bay. That tips off security. The SWAT team's officers uh, organize the scene, and then a group of officers start running towards Mandalay Bay to get up to the room, and then SWAT blows the door open. Las Vegas is one of the towns in the nation that is most prepared for terrorist acts because, obviously, it has always been a highly discussed target in the United States for al-Qaeda, for ISIS, for domestic terrorist attack, and their police department is greatly prepared for any kind of terrorist attack. Uh, so their SWAT team was, was on it. There were 100... Uh, 100, 150, 200 ambulances by any estimate. Um, basically, every ambulance in the entire city was rushing to the scene. The first responders, you know, we give first responders a lot of shit, but in this situation, first responders acted admirably, as did just regular citizens. You you, you see these accounts and you listen to this, and it's it's not just first responders, but it's every person in the crowd became a first responder shielding other people, some sacrificing their lives to shield others, administering first aid, putting people in the back of trucks, running away, bringing their cars back to transport people to the hospital. The hospitals were so well prepared that they, they had to turn doctors away because at certain points because they had more uh, doctors than they had patients. So the entire city of Las Vegas really, you know, not only does our heart go out to them, but also – just a, a bit of admiration for not just their city services, but also just the people that were there. And it was not just a great display of the American spirit, but also the human spirit. And, and a core tenet of this program is that human beings will always act out to help others, sometimes at the, the detriment of their own safety, to help a fellow human being in need. And that was greatly displayed in this situation and, uh, you know, it was it was just a tragic thing to see. And there were so many cell phone cameras capturing so much of it that I think it was just right in our face. And part of me also thought, 
wow, this is what it's like in a war zone. Wow, this is what it's like in a war zone that we perpetrate. <laughs> you know, I mean, this was really one of the first times that I think Americans really got a good sense of what is happening when they go over and fight for our freedoms. I mean, it was a, a grisly, in-your-face look at the reality of what the most, what most of the world, especially in the Middle East, what they live with every single day. When we liberate them. Right. You know, I, yeah. I thought it was the first crowdsourced ma mass tragedy, really. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, because yeah. like the Boston bombing, they did the, you know, search for the Sarnab brothers on Reddit. And, but this was sort of the first time it was normies doing the recording. It, it, yeah, it, it yeah, wasn't. It's, not, it's it, not the first time like uh, someone no. has like has like found somebody because the Unabomber was found not by the FBI but it was found by regular people. Right. But yeah, this whole like whole tragedy was like everywhere on Facebook. It was Live. people with like AOL email accounts yeah. that were recording Just this. There, it, yeah, messaging to each other like, "Hey, this is what I seen. This is what I saw here." This and, is this is I guess the way to put it is the first citizen journalism uh, mass casualty. Mass casualty mm -hmm. Yeah, because like. 4chan couldn't have been more wrong at every single step in this entire situation, including naming again the wrong person yesterday morning, and it's just like, guys, stop. Well, because like, that weaponized autism just, like, it had one bad piece of intel, and mm -hmm. they had to work on it. But once that intel was corrected, they corrected themselves. Right. But, right, it's garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. You say something. I thought you were going to say something. Oh, no. I just... <laughs> he was standing up for 4chan. Oh. <laughs> He's a mod on poll. Yeah. I do want to say this, like, uh, we're not critical of first responders like EMT, firefighters, stuff like that. I think um, uh, Wall's more critical just of police who abuse their power, not first responders. Not not even not even all police, just police who uh, yeah, abuse, abuse their the, power. The, right. Abuse their power. That's what we're right. critical. And police who watch that abuse of power and don't do anything about it. Right. When it comes to regular police officers who help, help people out or to uh, firefighters, EMT workers, you know, or like, because most of those people are volunteers, just right. like the volunteer state police in indiana and the volunteer firefighters and um, emt workers out there that do all the good work well, I'd, yeah. I'd like to chime in too because i'm, I'm one of the bad balls i've actually attempted uh twice to uh join the metropolitan police department here in indianapolis and i i do aspire to be into in law enforcement uh, unfortunately <clears throat> i waited so long and i'm i aged out so i have to find a unique way in uh you know i'm still looking at possibly being a reserve officer and, and my drive to do so was to you know try to, to make the change from within the department. Um, I'm not anti-cop, um, but I'm also not a bootlicker by any means either. You know, I just want to get in there. I want to you know be able to do the right thing by people. I mean, they 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 do provide a service to so many people, and I like to provide service to others. You know, and I think we could do so without stepping on the necks of people and and you know hurting their freedom. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The the we I I've always believed that libertarians should engage local law enforcement and be that f they're the first line of defense in protecting people's constitutional rights. And if they don't know what the co those constitutional rights are, and respecting and, and respecting that, then who's going to educate them? And libertarians ought to be the ones out there doing that. Uh, you made a face, Harry. What's I, the face I, I, about? I don't know. Cops aren't the, the front line of defending someone's personal rights or something like that. You are your own first line of defending your own personal rights. You are yourself, not cops. You in, are in, yourself. In terms of government down is what I meant. Uh, Within the co the framework and discussion of the government bureaucracy, exactly right. That's what that's what I meant. Yeah, but not you, within like a general larger picture, because it's obviously self preservation is the first. But it then is outside of you know, since you give up rights in exchange to access the government and the services it provides, they are the first responders for your personal rights. Right, and most police officers are really the only government agents agents that most people truly come in contact with. True. You know, yeah. maybe the BMV, but I don't even go to the BMV anymore. I do it all online. Thank you, Mitch Daniels. Yes, thank you. We well, <laughs> unless they're you and it's the Secret Service and you're actively trying to overthrow the American government. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my various run-ins with IRS agents and that sort of thing. Uh, no, so, uh, so yes. Uh, here, here's what's tough about this is when you when – you, the media is looking for anybody to blame. And any narrative to attach to this, and any political narrative to attach to this, and so far, forty-eight hours—is it forty-eight hours out? They're unable to do so. They're unable to find anything. They're unable to find a motive by the shooter. They're unable to find political ties. The there is a note. 
There was a there was? suicide note that's on. If you look at the picture I, I put on that Zero Hedge article, there is yeah. a pen with a, a piece of paper on the actual coffee table. Okay. We just don't know what the contents of it are because the investigation is still ongoing. Yeah. Be, it's because, like, the uh, Las Vegas Police Department is so well done for, for terrorist attack that they are, are keeping a tight lid. They are trying to discuss everything and get that with the FBI before they release it to the public, unlike most police departments, which that would have been leaked 12 hours ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this was – this is just so far outside of what it, the normal mass shooting it, – it, none of it, it – it's just – it's bizarre. Like, you – Okay, you can take the jihadist angle. Okay, well, <laughs> ISIS ISIS claimed that he was one of them and converted months ago. And let me say this. ISIS, go fuck yourself. How dare you have so low scruples that you would claim credit for something you didn't do? That's dishonest. We don't like that. Absolute haram. Absolute haram. It, there's no clear ties that the, all the lo, all of the law enforcement, his family, they all say he had no ties to uh, jihadis. He wasn't a religious person. The one thing that could be the perception of it is he wired a hundred thousand dollars two weeks ago to that Mary Lou Daniel, who's his, his live-in girlfriend. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the Philippines is sort of the new ground zero for ISIS since they've sure. been driven out of um, much of their Middle East uh, strongholds. But here's a guy who was a millionaire. He was uh, an accountant. He was. A real estate investor. He had several homes. It's not out of the realm of the possibility that he just wanted to send his girlfriend a hundred thousand dollars and said, "Hey, I'm out of here." Well, she uh, was on a vacation money. with her girlfriends and really? still is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, who knows? He might have said, "Go place a big bet on an Ara- Arabian sports, you know, horse race." Yeah. Uh, absolutely. You yeah. know, he's a big gambler. Like he deals in huge bets. If you know, based on the report so far, it isn't right. like he's doing two thousand dollar nights at the blackjack table. Mm-hmm. You know, he's right. doing big. Our bets repeatedly. Correct. Yeah, yeah, it's what he does. And in the last week, he's gambled one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They've they've found. Yeah, it just, could have been a casino just, over there that she was settling a debt. Exactly right. So, uh, he he's had he had a camera inside of his hotel room as well as down the hallway to watch police officers. Uh, he had at least one lens set up to tape himself as he fired hundreds of rounds of thousands of unsuspecting concert goers several hundred yards below his casino suite. Um, he, uh, he had made millions, according to his brother. I thought it, th- this was another difference in some of the other. The family, the brother, was on TV all yesterday morning, uh, and I... While I felt bad for him, I mostly felt bad when he said, you know, I've got a 90-year-old mother who is suffering right now because she's given birth to the worst mass murder in American history. And I felt so bad for that old woman. Uh, and the brother, there's something about the brother that just didn't set right with me. I don't know what it is. I didn't feel sorry or empathy for him. I felt like he weirded me out. There was something about him that just seemed off. I don't know, I don't know if it's just me. Let me know if it's just me or I'm crazy or if you felt it too. Tweet at me, at Chris Spangle. But it just seemed... Uh, it seemed there, canned to me. It, it, yeah, it just seemed a little off. He knew he was supposed to feel bad, and even though they weren't close, he played it like they they were. Right. There was just something inauthentic me. about it. And uh, It'd be like how Harry would feel if it was me. Right. They interviewed <laughs> Harry about this. Right. So like, sad. Oh, Greg uh, was a great guy. I mean... <laughs> Didn't It'd be even all fake. See things, you know. Um, mm, mm, I was going to go golfing the other day. Mm. Greg, uh, Greg Lenz, Cat Anagno snapped and uh, committed a uh, hundred murders over the course of ten years. Were there any signs? Quite a few, really. I always didn't want her on, but <laughs> I lost that vote. You'll have to refer one man, one vote. Refer <laughs> all questions to Chris Spangle. Yes, um, but unfortunately, he's under a patio. <laughs> he was the first to go. Um, so. The the brother said he made millions from his real estate deals. He was an amateur pilot. He had several properties across the U.S. Uh, he was always into gambling. He had he was he said he was not a gun nut. He had several pistols. And when he helped him move recently from, ironically, from uh, Mesquite, Texas, to Mesquite, Nevada, he he said when he helped him move, he didn't have really any guns, let alone any assault rifles. Um, he, he ended up with 42 firearms, at least one of them an automatic, which is, so the, the law for automatic weapons is that it is, uh, anything at made before 1986 you could have, but you had to have registered. They still make 
automatic weapons, correct me if I'm wrong, boys. No, no more. You cannot no. buy a brand new automatic weapon. They're not made no. since 1986. Okay. For so, civilian use. And okay. even the pr- even the replacement parts you cannot get for anything made prior, prior to 1986. Okay. Any, so if you owned something yeah. before that because they were um, – Tommy guns. Right. Yeah, they were the legal. Yeah, the they were legal until 1936. Yeah, pre, pre-1986, uh, it's grandfathered in. So, right. Yeah. And yeah. so, but you have to register with the ATF. You have a, to pay two hundred dollars, and you have to go through extensive, year long background checks of mm-hmm. of all. Getting from the Middle East with a, a brother that's a known, you know, held right. at Abu Ghraib. Like it's that kind of vetting. Correct. Yeah. And if they would have had one, and they the moment he tried to move it, that they would know he to move uh, with it. In the, the cost alone, and obviously he could afford it, being a multimillionaire. But I mean, no, no Joe Smo's got twenty grand to go buy an M sixteen that was, you know. Actually, before 1986. Right. Correct. Yeah, and the person is selling it's not going to sell it for 20 grand. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm sure the street guns go for a little bit more than 20 grand. Yeah. So, no. so he had two that had been modified with legal bump stock devices that allowed semi-automatic guns to give full auto fire up to 800 rounds a minute. Several had scopes and packed military grade ammunition. What is a bump stock? Bump stock is just basically just a stock on the side of the gun. So when you the recoil of the gun, so the AR-50 will basically bounce, forcing your finger to pull the trigger down faster. Okay. That's all it is. You can achieve it with this special made stock, which is not really like specially made. It just kind of, kind of just cut off. You can do the same thing just by cutting off stock and putting like a rubber piece at the end, like a dort, like a recoil to make your finger go, to give the appearance of an automatic firing. Correct. Yeah, and you can do the same thing by sawing off the. Okay, I'm giving advice, but don't do this. You can saw off the trigger. <sighs> This. <laughs> Allegedly, you can saw off or take off the uh, trigger guard off your AR-15, put a rubber band around that, and then uh-huh. run that rubber band to the front of your gun where you, uh, if you got a handle there, then you can use that to bump fire. Do that, but this is like an old style, like a uh, way of firing. People used to fire like the western guns like that. If you watch some of the old westerns, and they would bring their hands out there, they're basically bump firing that, um, like that Colt. Yep, exactly. Just tapping the back of an yeah. actual hammer. That's all it is, and. Bump firing is not easy. You have to. Uh, it's, it's physically be- demanding, first and foremost. Yeah. And the accuracy, there's just no accuracy in it. Yeah. And, right. and so, for yeah. a 64 year old guy who never had any military experience, never was a gun nut, and it just seems odd that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not claiming any conspiracy here because I've seen the photo of the guy dead. I mean, it's, yeah. I, I believe the official story. Um, it would tear up your shoulder, too, because right. it's using your shoulder as the plunger for the auto fire. Factor. Okay. So, like, you could probably do one magazine like that, and it just runs into your shoulder. But after that, that starts getting hurt. Mm-hmm. Granted, your adrenaline's pumping. Maybe you're not feeling this, but your shoulder's going to wear down on this. Not only now, that, the rifle will overheat. You'll get jams. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just – I mean, it's, it's fun to go to a range and, and, you know, drop a mag with the bump stock. But, I mean, other than that, it, 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 it serves no purpose. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I guess it served some purpose, right? I mean, he uh, he had tripods, and there were clear. I mean, it, it took the cops nearly an hour. I think an hour and some, an hour and ten, an hour and fifteen minutes or so to get to him. I mean, it was it it, it it wasn't easy to locate him at first. So, and that's why you hear it start and stop and start and stop is he had time to reload. So, like seventy two minutes, but he, right, seventy two minutes. Yeah. But he was in a hotel room. He's got four walls, right? Right. And you've got to be able to. You don't know it's just one person, okay? Mm-hmm. So they're so that so that SWAT team is going into a hotel room, which is full of people, many doors, many corners, right. many shadows. I'm shocked it took so fast. R- room absolutely. alone was a two bedroom suite, so it's not like it was just your standard hotel room. Either. Yeah, you know, and he had rented two rooms and mo- and gone. Checked in three days before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and tried to go there and tried to clear and get in there so you don't lose anybody too. Because the worst thing you want to do is get you know get flanked inside there because they would because see, seeing being seen in there and getting flanked and just you, you could lose a team. Yeah, so they would probably move slowly. I'm shocked they moved that fast. Yeah, absolutely. so I had no idea that it was just one shooter. Yeah, that, yeah, That's they the didn't other know. Thing. Yeah. I, I think they they sweat more than one floor. Didn't Correct. They? Yeah, they yeah, like yeah. The Twenty second floor. Yeah, and they just up. went up. Yeah, because they didn't know. You know, and could he have moved floor? So they'd have to go slowly and move and get everything carefully. Well, and, and for your anti-gun, your pro-gun control friends, I mean, with 72 minutes, he can he can reload and he can a sharp shot rifle, and he could have killed just as many people. I mean, it, it doesn't matter that it was a machine gun; those are scary. But 
with that amount of time to constantly reload, it's it's was it machine gun? What? <laughs> it was an assault rifle. Listen, legal. let me let me just say this right here. Let me. This is a good place to introduce. It was a modified this. semi-automatic rifle. Yeah. Gun people. And I want you to have your guns. I like dictionary. And one day, I I am sure that I will shoot guns. We're working on a series that I'm going to put together to do that. I don't give a fuck about your corrections. You people are like Mormons when you talk <laughs> about the Mormon Church. You people are like abortion people on either side when you talk about abortion. It's like, like a criminal defense like, attorney calling like liber- out the you know the standards of how the blood was <sighs> you know collected. I love you people. You're my people. But you people, we're like every, libertarians you, talking about roads. Every time yeah. you talk about every time you talk about guns, you guys belt me with autism. And I'm gonna say right now, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to guns. That's why I've got Harry and Justin here to help us. Okay, but. Calm down. <laughs> like, you guys don't help your case because it's like, even when your allies start going, blah, 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 machine guns. It wasn't a machine gun. It was an AR. Get your terms right, you stupid motherfucker. I'm not, I it's didn't like, say that. I'm just saying, just trying to correct you because saying machine guns and those, like, inflammatory words just puts guns in a bad light, especially when you're trying to go talk to the people who want to uh, just confiscate, you know. Well, News, Newsweek metal. itself put out an article saying we should ban machine guns, and saying, well, it'd well, be good, well, did considering that. it'd so be we, redundant legislation. Did okay, that. let's ban them twice. They so did what that. happens when you're a content they factory did that. and don't have reporters. Yeah, they did ban that in again. 1936. Right. Oh you know, God. that was the Tommy gun phenomenon created right. by Prohibition. Well, no, not, not, not necessarily. I'll stop. I won't go to it. So I'm just going to get on to it. So that's not why the <laughs> right. Thompson. At the end of the that. day, what he <laughs> tried to accomplish, he did. The yes. gun he had had been fitted in a way that it was darn close to the effect that you would have with a machine right. gun because he was able to fire 800 st- uh, at a time. You, but you could have said that if he just fired off one th- shot or just did like triple tat. I, it, the, oh, the thing that matters is that he had a machine and it fired brass down. Um, so he had a machine. machine. Yeah. He, had a, he had a gun that was like a machine shooting bullets, Harry, is what we're saying. Machine guns just have a different we, ca- I get we it. 22,000 people for 72 minutes, we could give Spangle a, you know, an unmaintained Colt 45 from, you know, the OK Corral, and he would person. do damage. That's yeah. The point is, right. you know, it, it isn't the, – the, the whole debate about the technicalities is a total distraction. Exactly. Well, if I'm, I had to give him a high point, there's no, no way he would No, no, no. That. Here's my point. Here's what I'm saying. I'm trying to help make the argument for you, and you stopped me to lecture me about machine gun and using that term – and it's like, now I'm just not going to finish my point. Fuck off. Now I want the law. Right, right. Now, <laughs> now the pistols are banned, Harry. Right. You know what? We're going to Keen. I want, <laughs> I want all the and you can't have any, and I'm going to roll you over up with them. You can't have a tank, though, but you want to pay for it. I know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, <laughs> you have a cannon too, those of you who are very passionate about this issue need to make sure that you are not, like, being annoying. Have the social awareness to not be counterproductive. Right. On getting into a technicality debate. This is exactly why in the last 48 hours I have posted absolutely nothing on Facebook right. about it. Right. Hmm. right. And this you're somebody who teaches, you know, you have no qualms at all about teaching self-defense to your own family members. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you think it's I, a I smart a, thing to do as a dad. I have a daughter that I've, I've, she's been shooting for the last two years, and she's damn good at it. And I will teach all my kids to shoot. I have no problem with that because that's, you know, the gun safety starts with learning the weapon, you know. Yep. Right, but your right. first post wasn't about, you know, the custom stock being irrelevant to what was done. Right. You know what and, I mean? And, I and right. how and it I doesn't apply to the law. And Harry, I'm not but saying you're doing this. And I, and I won't post You free staters, it. you know how you people are. I, I'm always just, LARPing. I'm just, I'm not mad at Harry. I'm just making a point based yeah. on what Harry does to illustrate what happens all the time when people who are, are on the Second Amendment side. Uh-huh. But aren't as educated. We just get frustrated sometimes with the people who know a lot about this issue because you guys get so uppity. They're gun grammar Nazis. That's yeah, that's they are. That's exactly yes. right. <laughs> Thank enough. you. Yeah, They're gun grammar Nazis, <laughs> and the second they correct me, I'm a real Nazi. Yes, <laughs> that's a that's a perfect way to put it. <laughs> Sorry, the second p- paragraph of your article, right. you wrote clip. You meant to write magazine. magazine? <sighs> get those uh, chambers going. <laughs> Stone Stone Aldridge. In Dear Leaders Court, uh, our our specific our special group for those who give uh, who subscribe ten dollars a month asked, "Can you go more into detail about this whole not being annoying thing? How do you do that?" So- As an INTJ, you have no chance. <laughs> right, you screwed, Stone. Take your Ritalin. 
<laughs> go watch some normie stuff on MTV, right. preferably crap reality TV, and then just smoke a bunch of pot and veg. Stone, Stone, I love you. You're you're a great addition to uh, to our friend group. Uh, okay, so th- now this guy had no. Let's let's talk about the crazy person a- angle. So the jihadist religious angle is out the window. Let's address him being a crazy nut job. Obviously, anybody who goes to this level of detail to kill other human beings and himself is a crazy nut job on some level. But he passed every background check. So universal background checks, which are like the first thing that everybody pushes for, everybody who is buying anything that shoots any bullet will will have to do a background check. Currently, who gets background checks if you're buying weapons, Harry or Justin? You want to do it? Currently, who gets background checks? Yep. If I go to buy a weapon and I want to buy a rifle, do I get background checked? You would get background checked. Okay. Mm-hmm. Even at a gun show. Okay. Yep. yep. The uh, the supposed loophole is just it's private transactions between two different people. That's when they talk about that loophole, <laughs> which is but, like saying that you need to register drug deals. If correct. That's an effect. But the well, other we're going to start but, registering the, but, but, the but, marijuana but, drug deals. There's a big but on this though. Okay. If you you can also you cannot do that to someone also who lives out of state. You have to verify that they're in, in out of state. And if you feel this person, you know this person. You know, is not going to do right with this gun. You feel something sketchy. You know, you can go. You know, to an uh, yeah, FFL dealer. Dealer. Oh, the get, ATF would yeah. take any complaint immediately and take it very seriously. And go after. Yeah. And if you see something like that, there's there's tons of this. So there's tons of uh, this whole idea that guns aren't regulated. That's a crock of crap. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I've personally have sold a weapon through an FFL dealer, just to avoid the hassle. Explain yeah. the FFL. Yeah. What is that FFL dealer? It's. Uh, Basically, I went through somebody with a class three FFL. Uh, they had, a, you know, the, the federal firearms license. They could deal guns legally, mm-hmm. uh, so they went ahead, and you know, I had to pay a small percentage to them, but they sold a weapon for me. It's a clearinghouse, so, that, so you don't so have legal I would, responsibility. So yeah. That, yeah, it was to protect myself. Yeah, they do that background check on them on that other person. They call the ATF. It's for like an them, eBay kind of, and it's just. And it's also like if they do something with that guy, it's that like, well, I went to the, I went, he bought that through an FFL. Okay, it's okay, you know. So that's on them for not catching right. it, not the person selling it. Correct. Yeah. So they can't sue you should that person right. commit a tragedy. It, it was basically, it, it, you know, it was legal liability. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's like yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a clearinghouse that says now you're absolved. We take full responsibility and we'll do the background check. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And is it federal though? Yeah, is it well, a federal registry well. they use? Or, na- or state level. It's not registry. It's not registry, yeah. But, I mean, they're going to do the background check. Is it going to be federal or state? Federal. Federal. So yep. that it catches interstate commerce then? Yeah. Good. Okay, good. Because yeah. that, that, I know and a lot of the, the, the dust-ups, but Nevada's got, more the, what, the 12th um, most least restrictive laws in the country. And it also, it also helps if you're selling to someone who's also out of state because you've got to be able to sell someone a gun that they can go back to their home state to. Right. So if you bought a – so you can't come over from Illinois with an Illinois license and buy a gun in Indiana and take it back to Chicago. Yeah, you can't buy it in an AR-15 Despite what here. politicians tell you. Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's, that's uh, interstate commerce, yeah. so then it's federal federal government. Yeah. That's why I'm able to take – like if I'm getting on – and I can take my gun here from Indianapolis, fly to Manchester, New Hampshire, and get my gun at the airport because I'm flying somewhere where my gun is legal and going somewhere where it all. If I fly to Boston, <laughs> my gun instantly becomes <laughs> illegal. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. Or if like that's I'm also like make sure I fly direct because I don't want to get stopped in like New. <laughs> somewhere else, but well, I can get it. Ohio's fine, but <laughs> well, no, you have to have a you know advanced knowledge of right. where it is and isn't allowable, and, and, and you can all of a sudden find yourself detained. Yeah, correct. And so, carry license also reciprocal. Right. Yeah, that's the big thing is the reciprocity yeah. uh, exchange they have and set up between states. We've seen that happen too with the uh, Pennsylvania resident went into New Jersey. Ooh. Uh, oh God. Yeah, and she was. Yeah. Well, no, no gun. It, it, Jersey, was, yeah. Or oh, Illinois. Another. The worst one was the um, uh, the Marine. Do you hear about the Marine? Like went to New York, had his pistol. Yeah, oh, yes, yes, I did. Yeah, I had his pistol that. in his pocket, yep. you know, and it's and it's always scary because like uh, like these like these awful states that are and they're right there in the middle. So it's hard to like. So if you've got a gun and you hunt in like Maine, New Hampshire, you're just trying to get to that area, you have to go through all these different states that will not let you have your gun during your rifle. Yeah, basically, you can't go through Massachusetts and New York. All right, so you I- can't have a knife <laughs> like like a knife. Longer than your thumb in uh, Massachusetts. But back to the sorry. So, so I thought that you know uh, every every gun is sold at a gun show, and you don't have to get a background check to do those anymore. Uh, like, 
If you, oh, okay. that, I thought that was the argument, is that people oh. are just buying guns at gun shows left and right without background checks, and that's where all it's the... It's a bullshit talking point. Yeah. Okay. There's no wait list, is the thing. There's no the three-day wait, right? The big Whoa, no, that, that's an also BSC, that's because... The, because if you're if something but that's ha- state specific, no, that's ATF. The ATF feels something's fishy about you. They can't figure you out. They'll put a wait they list. Put on. A whole, they put a whole. But I mean, if I go to the gun show and try to buy it right there, they're not going to do a federal background check while I'm standing there. Yes, they yes, will, they and they can do it in real time. Yeah. yeah. And so there is no issue with the wait list. If they feel that they can't determine that you are you, or they think something's up with your background, they will put a hold on that. Right. And so, but this, these were all purchased legally, which is really so. That's the real thing. Billionaire with no no criminal history. No, he had one lawsuit and or one citation, and that was it. Yeah, no. citation. Or? Yeah, yeah, they had yeah. no they had no du- case on. The, I mean, this guy basically read Robert Kiyosaki books, invested in apartment complexes, you know, got <laughs> bored, started gambling, yeah. and became you know sort of a degenerate guy like a Charlie Sheen and uh, Two and a Half Men. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of what he like, but an older, more depressing version. And then all of a sudden, does this. That's the scary element. Yeah. You know, really, to me, no signs like well, there's that we would, know yet, right? It would because like the law would only stop a you know like someone's like well, if someone has psychiatric help, well, if they actually would go seek help and stuff like that, then yeah, that would catch it. <laughs> but you know, he didn't. He doesn't right. have psychiatric health issues until this event. You're right, exactly right. And there's no signs of it. He's in a retirement community. All of his neighbors said he was a perfectly delightful man. Mm-hmm. Uh, he literally had no. They, the police had no awareness of him. None he, of the none of this follows the mass shooter playbook it, at all. It, if he were, that's the scariest part. If yeah. he were a mental health, like you've all seen the picture of the Aurora shooter with the orange hair, sitting in the orange jumpsuit in the court, looking like a deranged nutcase. Mm-hmm. I mean that that is the age or the South Carolina shooter with the big bug eyes, Adam Lanza. Adam yeah. Lanza, like you, you, those are the guys who are the mass shooters. These deranged Columbine aged kids who are going in and doing shootings between. You know, eighteen and thirty. It isn't. It isn't a sixty-four-year-old man with a great financial stability, a Filipino girlfriend, and a bunch of houses, and a, you know, too much time on his hands. Too much yeah. time on his hands. So, so the background checks, that increasing background checks wouldn't have wouldn't have stopped this. It, it, banning all guns wouldn't have stopped this because he still used illegal weapons. To to perpetrate the crime, he I bought. Think they're all okay. Yeah, those guns no, are all. Yeah, even yeah, the stock yeah. adjustment. Are the modi- but the yeah, modifications were not legal in the way that he used them. He Maybe, broke no, the law. Were, no, nope. no, they they were legal. It was yeah. all legal. Mm-hmm. Those are all legal. Maybe they would have had an ordinance and having those guns there in it a gun free. in the MGM. Correct. Yeah. Or yeah. Mandalay Bay. Mandalay Bay. <laughs> you're not allowed to have. Right. You're right. not allowed to have you know AR-15s yeah. in Mandalay but, Bay. They, they what? Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. Is like tell that tell that to the money team. Exactly. That's what I mean about. You know, guns the not being allowed team. in D.C. <laughs> and and, uh, yeah. and in Chicago, in the greater Chicago area. Like, yeah. clearly banning guns has solved the problem. Yeah. And right. They, and they were trying to say that, um, like, well, the hotel should have noticed, like, all these guns in this hotel room. Like, no, 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 no. I had, like, a small arsenal in a hotel room for, like, a week, and that <laughs> hotel didn't know nothing. Might, might I remind you that murder is illegal? Like, yes. Like, just ban, ban murder and stop all the yeah. Well, really, it's just sixty-four-year-old white males that are, you know, have, listen, have uh, well, leisure I, honest, income. Boomers. Boomers. Every, every, boomers. Everybody, be quiet. I need to say this. Listen, until we get this all figured out and we stop all this madness, we need to ban boomers and we need to get this under control, and then they can come back if we figure it out. But what about a temporary holding cell? I I think they have to go to camp. I camp. Been, yeah. The warning, villages. We'll just put chain link around the villages. I've been warning you people about boomers. <laughs> Uh, okay, so... We'll lure them there like a timeshare and then trap them with chain link fences. So so here's here's a guy who's we'll going... We'll play Jimmy Buffett and draw them all in. Yep, and golf carts. He just doesn't give a fuck about what the law says. He doesn't give a fuck about what regulations say. He doesn't give a fuck about any of it. And even if you had even if you had greatly limited guns or banned them, he had the means to buy them. They still would exist. And that's what the whole banning the guns argument... It's just not a rational thought. It is as stupid as saying, it is as simplistic as saying, well, let's just ban murder and then people will stop because the government says so. It's a dumb thing to say you look like an absolute retard. He not only did he have the means to buy these weapons, since he is a pilot, right? Right. He has the means to fly to Mexico. Traffic them. Uh Pick up a Fast and Furious it's rifle. Las Vegas. You can buy cocaine from slapper, <laughs> the slappers on the street oh, in a private room in the uh, 
He, well, I won't say where. He but. could pick up an Obama <laughs> fast, you know, an Obama Fast and Furious gun from Mexico, fly that back here, you know, with you know a couple of other people in the back, so it paid for the trip himself, you know, drop those people off at the airport, you know, hit up the you know the casino afterwards. Well, that's what I mean. Is that the, the ban? No matter what you did, even if you took away his income, if someone went, Justin, somebody who wanted to be in law enforcement. What can you do as a law enforcement officer or policing agency or as a legislator if someone really wants to kill somebody? Absolutely nothing. Just continue to follow them and hound them. But and then go. you have to be aware of them. No. And You've got to have one police in Orwellian police state where you, we're all tracked all but the you, time. No, no, no. In a specific case, if you have probable cause, then you could track them. But there's Not nothing. This guy, though. There's nothing leading up to this. Though there would have been any po- probable. Follow this guy. Yeah. Hater's gonna hate, killer's gonna kill. And like right. with Jack Ruby, That's... like you know, like in that kind of thing. If someone really wants someone dead, mm-hmm. and like with JFK and that type of thing, they will find a way to get to somebody. Someone will grease somebody's hand with a hundred dollar bill and get in a room they shouldn't be in and handle it. I mean, yeah. Jack Ruby. There may have been other circumstances. But th- that's there. what Bad I mean. It's like he, no, but like he got in there and shouldn't. Right. Somehow, some way, some influence will take care of the issue if there's a big enough vendetta. If you really want to kill someone enough. And you pissed off the wrong people. There's nothing the greatest law enforcement agency on earth could do. Right. The other thing is, like, this was very indiscriminate. He was firing into ground that he didn't know any people. And it was like an outdoor venue on the ground. He could have done the same thing with a, um, like, a truck, like the London, like the London um, incident. He just got in the truck and just drove through the crowd. He had the fertilizer bomb in his car. Mm-hmm. He had Tannerite in one of his homes. A fun weekend. A fun week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot and blow shit up. That's what. Yeah, yeah. it's this really cool, um, crap tactical uh, explosive. It's a putty you, explosive brick that you can buy on. You, you can buy this online, um, be, but you need like a. It's a. You have to sh- hit it something hard and for it to explode. So like a bullet, and it will like explode. Okay, it's military. Use. Yeah. And then it's for, um, yeah. like, you know, digging out tunnels. Like, it was it primarily used. It was like TNT originally. Yeah, but, like, a military expo- military wouldn't use Tannerite. Yeah, they use C4. Yeah, which C4 is basically a um, Thai nitro tolerine mixed with a different type of clay with mixed with a different chemical that will stabilize us. It would only go off with a electrical charge. Right, and so, like, it's C4, this Tannerite's just basically the working man's or poor man's uh, C4. Yeah, if you need to do it. And you need it, though, you, but you have to hit, instead of the initiation being an electrical uh, signal, it is a um, basically like a mass friction event or like a very... Yeah, being struck by something. Yeah, being like struck by something. Yeah. Nope, sounds like I know yeah. what I'm putting in Bittner's car. <laughs> <laughs> right under the tires. I'm just putting in sugar. Right. <laughs> his, his gas tank, his mouth, his anus, everything. <laughs> We're going to see if this thing runs on... Uh, on some good old fashioned sugar, uh, right? <laughs> oh, sugar cane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he's he's just this is yeah. it's the scariest thing to me because it it doesn't fit any pattern. Mm-hmm. It's a completely random event. It's from a guy that you would just see sitting. Al- He'd be like Tad Western in in thirty years, <laughs> well, sitting at the Coachman yeah. Bar in a Florida or a Hawaiian shirt, right? Mm-hmm. Nursing a beer, New Balance shoes. Yep, he'd gotten rich off the ranch, so he's just you know. Managing the sales of his mixtapes. Spends. And then for whatever reason. Loves gambling, loves horse. Right. Has some Filipino girlfriend that's 30 years younger that he's wiring 100 grand to two weeks before. Always promised her trips to Vegas. Right. You know, this is, I mean, honestly, like that's the. He, and, that, and Tad is no threat to anybody. Right. It's nobody like the horses would, on the ranch. Nobody would suspect Tad of being a domestic terrorist. And that's what's so scary, though. Right. We all know this guy. We yeah. all have seen this guy sitting at the local watering hole. Like, yeah. At the Chili's on a Wednesday mm-hmm. night, getting a little inappropriate with the waitress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's a little mm-hmm. rough looking, and he doesn't seem to care. No, nope. yeah. he's just a lonely fellow who looks a little uh, weird. But you Promising know. her to go take her to Vegas right. you know, for her 21st birthday. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's that guy. That he's, guy that picks up someone's tab, just keep partying with me. I'm calling a limo. You're my going friend. To, we're going to another bar. I'm like, what? Okay, he, let's do this. He, right. he's, We've been there. He doesn't seem political. There's absolutely no word from anybody in his life that can even nail down what his political ideology is. He's a registered Democrat, right, in one state, and then rep- Republican in Nevada. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, It's I, a rumor <laughs> about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's got two different... But that's like Martin true, Luther King Jr. was a registered yeah. Republican because that's all you could register through. Like, that was the easiest way to get registered based on it. Well, he wasn't going to register as a Democrat because in his area, those were the ones who were hanging people, so... Well, that's what I mean, though, is like, you know, it's not like registration determines party. 
Right. It's a lot of times a convenience thing. So yeah. he, he's yeah. uh, his his just de- so you can vote. Yeah. What another weird aspect of this? A serial bank robber who ended up on the mess. His father, Benjamin Hoskins Paddock, a serial uh, serial bank robber, who ended up on the FBI most wanted list back in '69 when he escaped from federal te- prison in Texas while serving a 20 year sentence. FBI kept him on the list for the next eight years. He was on the lam. He was eventually found one year after he was removed from the list in '78. While outside an Oregon bingo hall, the agency said that the fugitive had been diagnosed as psychopathic and also had possible suicidal tendencies. Uh, so uh, weird history. His brother, I guess, was born was knocked. His mom was knocked up while he was on the lam, but never actually met the guy. So the dad wasn't around. Uh, so it. The dad was a degenerate gambler con man. Like, right. Got caught. The whole reason he got caught was in a con scheme, I think, like in Illinois. Like, the, the, only, the only things that I can think of here, um, he's, he's, he is a closet ideologue on, both the, on either the left or the right, probably the left, like the Scalise shooter, who was uh, also out of profile, an older guy who, you know, but he was involved in politics. It was clear within the first few hours that this was a dude was a Democrat, you know, because he was spouting off all the time about liberal politics and Trump and everything, you know. But Is that confirmed? Uh, the Scalise shooter? Oh, the Scalise shooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that yeah, guy yeah. was a hardcore liberal. He was an in, you know. He was a Bernie just, bro. Exactly. He was, right. he yeah. was just a lot cleaner and, you know, more gray than an Antifa right. person. So he, he's, uh, he's just a... He's a ghost of a human being who has no seeming motive, and he's just, I think, it, it has everybody much more freaked out because of that. Because mm-hmm. you can't blame religion. You can't blame politics. When we don't know that the ISIS thing isn't, Let's honestly, say, we, all would, be, we all would be shocked if it were, but it's the best lead yet. The, the only thing that I can think of is that he's, he got himself way into debt, in, in gambling debts. And he was forced to do something that he – I mean, but even then, the amount of planning that this took, and nobody seemed to have been helping him. There's no tapes of anybody helping him. It's just him. There's no, like, gambling debts that he could have been forced to do this. I mean, he that just – That we know of yet. That we know. If there were, the investigation would keep those quiet. It will – It will. right. Yeah. So – what, what type of weird James Bond world is that, that there's gambling debts to tell you to go shoot 59 people in, in that, a crowd? At that low level. Right. Yeah. That's – I mean, because let's be honest. Like, yes, he's a whale, but this isn't – this isn't having LeBron come in for the weekend and drop six million on a you know on craps. This is a guy dropping at most a hundred k and freaking out about it, mm-hmm. right? You know, and having to dial it back a little bit, yeah, <laughs> or dodge yeah. and evade the casino yeah. for a bit. Like he'll get there, but this isn't a guy that deals in millions of dollars where you would have. There just is there is no answer. Yeah. There's no clear motivation. And generally, when ISIS does claim for something, generally they actually did do it. You know, because they, they've disavowed different. Um, at, crappy factions that try to say like oh we're with isis no that's not us yeah like boko haram yeah, like, like no, ooh, no you guys no. are like beach grove of islamic <laughs> terrorists we're not claiming you i mean and and here's the problem the lack of motive the lack of information starts to breed conspiracy theories oh it is just like giving a vacuum or a petri dish to a bunch of crazies oh, and especially the way it was so quick i've right. never seen disinformation spread as fast as it was yeah in oh, my life God. yeah yeah, even like the if it, you got into like the Facebook Live around the time the shooting was happening and just popping around Las Vegas, you could, could hear different people's re- like on like level reports of what they saw, what they was going on because a lot of people kept saying like there's like four shooters. I saw shooting in a lobby, stuff like that, but unconfirmed reports. I, I stuck to CNN and traditional media, and I I didn't I didn't pick up any of what you were telling me about Greg. The first tweet was from a brand new account mentioning it. Brand yeah. new, ten followers. First, a brand new thing mentioned Michael something, and he's got a Facebook account too. And that's what shocked me is if you, you know, can go and search, La- search Las Vegas shooting, mm-hmm. the very first person to mention it on all Twitter was a brand new account. Uh, let's oh, let's go creepy. to this is another creepy. Now, that doesn't mean he didn't start one right there as a public service. It just means that it was new. Yeah. So yeah. let's. This is another creepy thing. Let's jump in. Uh, this is a Channel Three, and I don't. Why are you huffing, Harry? What is your problem with this clip? This is a weird little thing that I think is. Interesting. It's okay. It's just fake news. It's not. It's it's Channel Three. It's the NBC affiliate in Las Vegas. I'll take that over CNN and Washington Post on this. Right. All right. So let's yeah, take a listen. That. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's not a huge step forward, but <laughs> all right. Here we go. One um, step forward. Oh. All right. So. 
Yeah, we were sheltered under uh, and, and behind quite a few things as we were making a hotel and getting there as quick as they can while the shots are being fired. Right. News 3's Christy Wilcox at times has been moved back and forth and mm -hmm. even at one point sheltered behind a brick wall. She is talking to a victim right now, Christy. Yeah, we were sheltered under uh, and, and behind quite a few things as we were making our way down uh, the south of the strip because police were just, you know, pushing us down. And right here, Bri Brianna, uh, you were here for your 21st birthday. Yes, that's correct. Tell me a little bit about um, what you saw, what you heard. Um, we went back up to the room, and as soon as we reached the room from the concert venue, we just heard constant shootings. At first, we thought it was fireworks, but then it was... It was shooting. And then somebody said something to you to, to tell me about that experience. Yeah, so there was a lady who pushed her way forward into the concert venue into the first row, and she started messing with another lady and told us that we are all going to die tonight. Do you know why she was saying that? I mean, was this after fought, uh, the shots were fired? or It was about 45 minutes before the shots were actually fired, but then she was escorted out by security. How does that make you feel? I mean... It makes me feel uncomfortable, especially coming here for my 21st birthday. And What a bullshit question, by the way. How does that make you feel? There's so much of that bullshit kind of like, how does that make you feel? Like, that is not a, that is not a question, okay? If you are a major network anchor or you are a reporter and your follow-up question is, how does that make you feel? That's not journalism. That is, you're trying to get a reaction so you can get some great tape. Like, that is just, it's you, you got yourself muted. It's just like... I hate that question more than anything, but... There's a reason she works at the Las Vegas affiliate. Well... Yeah, she's trying to get to national level and stop pushing my buttons. So, sorry, you had yourself off and you were uh, not talking. No, nope, kidding. Uh, all right, so I thought that was a really weird thing. I don't know what that means. I don't know what uh, newsworthiness there really is about that, but I just you'll probably hear a lot about that, and that's one of those little pieces of conspiracy that are around this. Greg, you found casting calls as we always do they're all i mean let's let's be clear most of these are national talent agencies that have existing contracts for whatever type of event is needed or whatever right. type of you know extras net you know heavy like or even our former co-host you know joe ruiz mm -hmm. he used to answer those and they, it's not like those things come down they're on a recurring basis right until they are taken down due to the uh the agreement on the website right so they just keep posting them over and over it's like the craigslist ads for multi-level marketing schemes right it works great yeah but people liberty reps people take these these postings for cattle calls for castings in certain areas like in las vegas and then try to make that into a crowd of people that are going to be shot for a false flag it's like a casting call in Vegas for a for crowd. Rehab happens every Sunday at the like the casino the, that uh, right. what the Hard Rock Hotel. Like they pay promotional models to come and fill the pool so that yep. people come. Mm -hmm. So like it isn't like that's a coincidence. Like this is a recurring contract right. needed on a weekly basis. Right, you're a hot girl in the pool and we'll pay, you we'll pay you fifty dollars. That's how those that's how those pools get filled. Like with with people that you see. I mean, it's not a coincidence. So right. And then yeah. they're so vague in what they're asking for. They include every like Trump's announcement ceremony was filled with four higher crowd crowd right. uh, crowd organization. So I mean, like it's not like it's beyond the scope that every casino in Vegas would use this exact company. Right. Yeah. Uh. So I I just uh, I was irritated all day yesterday. What was um, really getting to you? Well, first I think it was just it was overwhelming. On an emotional level, I was watching – I woke up, and it was the first tragedy that I, I woke up, I looked at my phone, and I went, oh, Jesus. I mean, I was genuinely flabbergasted by – I mean, I, I'm a news junkie. Not much moves me, but this really – like, wow. Immediately turned on CNN, started watching it, and I just was like, what is going on here? I mean, it was hard to get your head around. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in the afternoon, the stories start to really roll in of people who were lost and how they were lost. And uh, I was watching the press conference with the uh, White House spokesperson, and, and she she broke up at one point. Reporters were breaking up. And I, I'm just the t I'm an emotional person, so when I see people choke up, I choke up too. And then I went and read the story about the, the married couple. They've been married a year. They went to this concert. They flew out to the concert. He ended up shielding himself to save his wife, 
and I was in a Chili's eating lunch, and I lost it. <laughs> like, I didn't lose it. I didn't ugly cry, but I definitely teared up uh, as I was eating. Well, how uh, could you not? I, it's just, it's so moving. Yeah. And then the responses that morning of just watching people just shield each other and the the heroism, the true heroism. I mean, like, I saw a reporter on CNN yesterday. This lady was giving blood at, like, 7 p.m. that night. And the reporter was like, thank you so much. You're a hero. And I mean, like, the fuck she is. She's giving blood. That's not a hero. Okay, we use the word hero way too often in this country. You're not a hero. Uh, the people who are shielding their bodies, shielding their wives with their body to save their life, those are heroes. Those, those people who are running, like there was a, a young uh, African-American kid, a great, like, uh, sorry, Harry, a black kid with a patch on his shoulder. He had been shot in the shoulder. He had gotten his family to safety, and then he started running after a group of girls who were who were stuck in the middle of the firing lines. Got shot in the in the shoulder. That bullet's going to be there forever. He's permanently scarred, trying to save the lives of of young uh, uh, of other people. That's a hero. And then you just you get so pissed at this motherfucker who goes up in and just starts shooting innocent people for what reason? There's no reason for it. Even if we had a motive, it, there still wouldn't be a reason for it. It's like, what kind of monster does this? Who, who, who puts this much time and effort into such a demonic act? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. And then you get on Facebook, and you see these selfish motherfuckers trying to force their stupid political narrative into a tragedy to emotionally manipulate people, good people who are on Facebook try, and who are watching this grieving – and then they have to deal with manipulation from fucking liberals who want to use a tragedy to try and manipulate people into a bullshit narrative that wouldn't have prevented this tragedy anyways. It, they're, they're using people's ignorance. Their own ignorance is using other people's ignorance to be more ignorant. And it just gets so frustrating and pisses me off so much because I, I just – because I, it's like watching a political movie. I get pissed off because I know too much about it. It's like a doctor watching ER, and I just watch this and I go, "You are just a, you you are not a good person." If you took the opportunity yesterday to post about gun control, because you're using a situation, the tragedy of these people lying in a parking lot, people who are trying to have a a, a fun time with their friends and family, and then they see other people dying around them, and then you are using that to push your personal political narrative as, as because you feel like you're being some fucking brave hero getting online and talking about gun control when you have never fired a gun, you don't know shit about guns, you have no sh idea how pu public policy works, your, your platitudes about banning all guns makes you look as stupid as me saying today – why don't we ban all murder? You look like a fucking idiot. And I hope that you feel bad every single night when you go to sleep for manipulating people in a time of tragedy because you're a bad person. And I hope that you delete your status and then your Facebook account and self-abort. So that's why I was pissed off, Greg. I second. <laughs> Can I get an eye? Yeah. Can we right. pass this as yeah. legislation? Right. S liberals should self-abort. Right. If you're it just they're pro. They're pro-choice. They should self-abort and prove how pure they are. Right. <laughs> it just you know, and, and the right it, the right does it too. Like the first thing, it's I like know. seventeen of my Facebook friends. Oh, we got to ban the fucking Muslims. Like you don't know shit. You don't know anything about anything. We don't even know now, 48 hours later, anything about this guy. We don't know anything about the case. We don't know anything. You're not a fucking expert in criminology. You don't know shit. Shut up. Yeah, the case isn't done. Las yeah. Vegas is a sanctuary city. And let's be clear. Right. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Abort yourself, too. Yeah. Leave the rest of us alone in the middle, in the middle of your insane, insane mm -hmm. bullshit. Shut the fuck up and give the rest of us a moment to grieve and a little bit of peace because I'm so tired of logging onto my Facebook and seeing these fucking retards. I just – I'm so over it. I'm done with it. <laughs> no, it is. Go, go look at our Facebook page. Oh, no. That's ground zero. The, I'd start – if you like our Facebook page, you should unlike it because you, they're the first to get – Sent to camps when I'm in yeah, charge. I tried to bring humor to it yesterday with the penis jokes, but uh -oh. nobody bit on it. Uh, uh, no, no. It, it was just 
too soon. Our Facebook group, amazing. Yeah, the group. Uh, our Facebook the page disc- of 85,000 people, retards. The, the a libertarian. It's, you know, it's the people that, like, a lib- all libertarian or whatever that crap is, or being libertarian. Being libertarian, yeah. Some, some Never Never Land fantasy fiction. Right. I don't know. You yeah. know, they go LARP and pretend that they're shape-shifting interdimensional child molesters up in, you know, with Daryl Perry. Right. So, <laughs> sorry, Harry. But no, that, that, those are the people that are so used to just being pandered to. The second you introduce anything that is, even if you talk about, like kind of what Harry and I talked about today, I can't say that that a gun law, either way, has a stri- more strict gun laws have prevented a school shooting. Like if we had a true free market, mm-hmm. and I didn't sell to children, or I chose to sell to children, I couldn't conclusively point to this and say there wasn't a school shooting because we decided not to sell to children. That's or say that it was anyway because the child wouldn't find one and break into a parent's you know safe. And so the whole point is libertarians are so used to being able to prove beyond any and all a reasonable doubt that all laws are bad, even if you take a second to just consider the tr- like the broken window fallacy, with laws and police, when they're effective, it, the effects are unseen. Right. They've done a good job when you don't see the work, you know, public safety, when they catch a terrorist, when they catch a guy that has a underwear bomb on Detroit on Christmas Day. You know, when those types of things are discovered, that's when you, no one celebrates that. No one celebrates the TSA when it's done its job effectively. And I'm not saying that these thing, things wouldn't happen either, because I assume that libertarian, like the, all libertarians do, people are mostly good and rogue, act, rogue things regardless of laws. That's the side I come down on. But I, I'm not so arrogant as to say I might be wrong. And the second you even open it up to criticism among libertarians, the hardcore big L's, it's like you've to- said the Pope was fake news. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, it's like you know, the Holy Roman Emperor Sarwak, you challenged his orthodoxy and you're excommunicated, and there's a second papacy over We Are Libertarians and Dear Leader. Yeah. Well, We're the, the real one. Well, the TSA <laughs> has never, like, a. Uh, 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 Discovered it like a, a terrorist attack, and the shoe bomber and the and the underwear bomber, they were on the plane and blew up themselves up and basically burned that everyone pounded on them. Right, wasn't you know wasn't stuff like that. And uh, but a lot of the laws that would have stopped crime and stuff like that, I see most of those are. The, each one of those would have just been done with by someone else, like a different actor in that situation. The law didn't stop it. Um, everyone knows murder is wrong, and people would have stopped it anyways. This guy, if he couldn't have gotten a hotel room that weekend, he'd have waited for the next one. He'd have waited for the CMAs. He'd have waited for something else. Yeah. He was a, what we think. The, he started really buying guns, they think, around the time the Jason Aldean Route 91 concert was announced in February. That's really when he started to pick up steam on buying weapons. I mean, he, this is that that far premeditated. That which means he's not a nut. There's some sort of there's some there's some sort of here. there's some sort of fuel that drove this. this. It's like he's got a terminal illness, and so he was a nobody in life, and so now he's going to be known throughout history as the worst of of all the human animals. Like right. there's just no sense to it whatsoever. And that's the scary part. And since there is there aren't any details, one you can't an investigation so law enforcement's hamstrung and let's be clear las vegas pd don't deal in petty drug you know trafficking like they don't these people las vegas started as the mob right i mean to think that that isn't still sort of an outlaw work ethic you know they don't care about the guy dealing pot on the street corner they care about catching human trafficking right which you can still get in las vegas yeah. if you're a high enough roller yeah so no yeah. law Mobs it's to- lawlessness if you have the right income level. It's still run by the mob. It's just different clothing. Right. They're just and they're they've official. incorporated. Yeah, they're official now. Right. Yeah, they wear suits. Right. It, you know, it's it's sort of like Godfather. Robert Duvall's the head of it now, not mm-hmm. Al Pacino. Yep. You it's know. different now. We're more official. We've we got, got, we got, got licenses now. We can yeah. do this. Precisely. Yeah. We have and forms. <laughs> exactly. And so that that's the case. And so they're they're going to do a comprehensive investigation in coordination with the FBI and whatever governmental agencies are necessary. It's just in that vacuum of no information. It immediately gets politicized, which pisses everybody off. Right. You know, because nobody wants to shoot anyone worse than me when I see a liberal talking about gun control in the midst of a, you know, thing. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I, I feel like duels need to be brought back on you, days following the attack. You want to go halvesies? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know some liberals I would have challenged to a duel on Monday. You know, but the other thing, too, Sorry. is that conservatives, conservatives have to balance it and not immediately talk about how the entire Constitution is just words on paper outside the Second Amendment in right. the midst of a tragedy. You just got to, you know, have this 
So, because ultimately, anyone who speaks out loses. Right. Yeah. You look like a, a moron. Right. And then in this case, you can't force an investigation to be compromised so that the fake news doesn't ratchet up and you know you get a whole bunch of blog sensationalism and edited videos on YouTube and on poll that end up going viral because that just feeds the narrative of you know lack of trust because once you once you get lack of trust in the very people conducting the investigation why the hell would you accept the results of the investigation mm -hmm. and it's not like they have a great track record like on the warren commission majority of people aren't going to accept whatever they they give us and it could be it could be true but because this window of no concrete results happened yep. it doesn't even matter which is crazy. If <laughs> Go ahead, here. I don't think so. I, I think it's um, because it's so tight-lipped through Las Vegas that they have every piece of information that Las Vegas people concrete make sure. Yes, it's just that it is, and, and it's taking a while because they want to make sure they've got it right. And that's how that's how every investigation takes. But hand. they're not going to open up the investigation and say, "Well, yes, we did look at that Twitter video by Dan Bilzerian that looks like there's a flashing light on a lower level." You know, they're not going to take the time to explain the process they went through. They're just going to publish the results. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna hide, that's where the hide disinformation it in a book. comes in. Yeah, they're going to hide it in a book. Yeah, the yeah. – uh, the, They don't want to read. They'll just comment on. I, I have to say, watching all the press conferences and watch – I mean, the just the, the task of, of this and the strain that it put on the city services. The amount of evidence to collect is the, enormous. The, the yeah. bodies in the corner – I mean, e the coroner said yesterday, he said, no, we weren't overtaxed. Like, they were prepared for this amount of carnage, I mean, which is unreal to me. I mean, they had – the pe people uh, still in the parking lot yesterday afternoon on the ground, and all the, as they were going through the crime scene, they were very cognizant of making sure that every single piece of this was was done right and examined properly. I mean, they real. This is how every single one of these things should be handled. Everything is very clear. They've been very clear. There's not a lot of questions out there still, but there's not a lot of information. That there's it just no motive, and that's driving everyone crazy. That's driving yeah. everyone nuts. Um, because you try to project onto it whatever your side. So mm -hmm. the passionate non sequiturs of the gun debate. This was a great article by uh, Rich Lowry. You won't hear me say that often, uh, but it's that, that uh, we're sharing on the Facebook page tonight, and I would encourage you to share this. But I've got a better article if you're only going to share one. The Passionate Non Sequiturs of the Gun Debate by Rich Lowry, and I'm only going to read one paragraph from this because I thought it was good. The problem is that something, namely all the usual gun control proposals, isn't well suited to stopping mass shootings, but liberal politicians never let the inapplicability of their proposals stop them. The passion with which they advocate for new gun control measures is inversely related to their pr prospective efficacy. Now, for those of you like me who don't have college degrees, what that means is, yeah, they're very passionate for things that don't work, and so people buy it. And you get Jimmy Kimmel crying on national TV <laughs> about gun deaths, and we've got to do something. And Stephen Colbert saying, we can do something. The answer can't be no response. And it, people just have trouble accepting that this just happens. You are not guaranteed to leave your house and come home at the end of the night. You're not guaranteed to live through the day and that the government, your mommy, can't stop even the worst tragedies from happening. It's like there should be a way for it to happen, but you just can't. There's nothing that is going to – The uh, amount of, of personal liberty you'd have to give up to prevent this would be staying in a block prison cell your entire life and never leaving. You, you would have to have every bag searched, going into every hotel. You, you couldn't even go if you really wanted absolute security. You even had – you already had gun – detector or metal detectors and pat downs yesterday going into the concert like uh, you know every hotel is now going to treat it like a an airplane and we're gonna think about the amount of people 300 rooms in a hotel here i mean there's probably a thousand hotel rooms around me right now and they're probably half to three quarters full and no matter how That's great just, the surveillance state is it just you know it's already looking for um, you know, predictive signs, so it's going to focus right. on the things, and this is just, there aren't any signs. And the left wants to make this outrageous, you know, they've seized today on Bill O'Reilly, who said this is the price of living in a free society. And they've seized on that, saying what a monster he is, because he doesn't buy into gun control. What a monster Bill O'Reilly is. I agreed with what he said, to be honest. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're wearing... You're wearing a shirt what? with bullet shit. That, that's very callous and cold-hearted of you. How could you 
agree with him, Justin. Uh, I mean, it, it. Look, he probably shouldn't uh, have said it as soon as he did, but I mean, the timing was wrong. Yeah, it, it was the like timing. The timing was wrong. But he, he's, he's not. He's not wrong. No, he's he's absolutely absolutely right. Bill O'Reilly, right. he's not wrong, and I I can't. Stand but when the he guy, said it, was insensitive and is counterproductive to what he's trying to accomplish. He he said it literally. Six hours after the tragedy. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That, right. And that's that's the problem I have with what he said is the timing of it. Yeah, time Which, and place are ma- what what matters. Take I mean, a fucking day. Just didn't, take didn't a even day. Let the rigor mortis set in. I right. Mean, <laughs> they're still literally conducting the investigation now. Let the investigation. Right. You know, let let it get cleared out on Las Vegas Avenue or you know right. Route ninety one. Right. And that's the thing is people just they immediately try and like with Bill O'Reilly, I get it. He's you know he lost his show. He lost a lot of his following. He's lost his relevance. So he needed to get back in the. You know, into the fray, and this is probably intentional. Yeah, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so I wanted to bring another article to your attention. Uh, this is a fantastic article article in the Washington Post today, uh, in the opinion section, by a woman named Leah Libresco, uh, L I B R E S C O, and she is a former writer at Five Thirty Eight, uh, Nate Silver's website. Least part. accurate predictive models in voting since it's 2016. Still, still an amazing website with a ton yeah, of great is. information. <laughs> he just was wrong like everybody else. Right. And so what he was closer than all the other wrong people at being wrong <laughs> yes. uh, is the way that I'll stick up for Nate Silver because I really do like their podcast and website. And what they They're tried quants and really great statisticians. Right. And so what they try to do is they take all the, all the data and try to make sense of politics today and data – and it can be a really informative, interesting website. And uh, so she worked there, and she wrote this article called, I used to think gun control was the answer. My research told me otherwise. Uh, and she said that her colleagues at 538 and she spent three months analyzing all 33,000 lives ended by guns each year in the U.S. And I wound up frustrated in a whole new way because previously she was frustrated that something wasn't being done And uh, so she started looking into it, and she researched the strictly tightened gun laws in Britain and Australia and concluded that they didn't prove much about what America's policy should be, and neither nation experienced drops in mass shootings or other gun-related crime that could be attributed to their buybacks and bans. Mass shootings were too rare in Australia for their absence after the buyback program to be a clear evidence of progress. So essentially what Australia did a few years ago They said, uh, we're going to buy your guns. We will give you money for your guns, and we're going to ban guns, and we're not going to uh, stiff you on that cash. Since we're passing the law, we'll we'll pay you for your guns. It's kind of like eminent domain for weapons. Exactly. Um, And in both Australia and Britain, the gun restrictions had an ambiguous effect on other gun-related crimes or deaths. When I looked at uh, other oft-praised policies, I found that no gun owner walks into a store to buy an assault weapon. It's an invented classification that any semi-automatic that has two or more features, such as a bayonet mount, a rocket-propelled grenade launcher mount, a folding stick or pistol grip, but guns are modular and any hobbyist can easily add these features at home, just as if they were Legos. As for silencers, let's pay attention, Hillary Clinton, who decided to use, uh, just to, to, to be a decent human being in thoughts and prayers like the rest of us, d- took the moment to... Uh, shit on silencers and say this is this bill's moving through now she has cooler disease I right really blame her yeah. as for silencers <laughs> they deserve that name only in movies where they are the pew pew in real life silencers <laughs> limit hearing damage for sure <laughs> they he, he, limit this hearing like danger ten, this is what 10 to 15 decibels so right that it brings it down it. to yeah and, and ar just, and especially AR, for hearing deaf and you know so you don't go deaf you still want you're still going to use hearing protection oh it, yeah exactly an ar15 with a silencer is as loud as a jackhammer Magazine limits were a little more promising, but practice a shooter could still change magazines as so fast as to make the limits on those magazines meaningless. So they kept looking. They kept searching. They couldn't believe that this was true. They couldn't believe that their worldview was crumbling in front of them as they started to actually do research into the topic and figure something out. And what they found is that two-thirds of gun deaths in the United States every year are suicides. Almost no proposed restriction would make it meaningfully harder for people with guns on hand to use them. And people, let's be honest, would find a way to kill themselves with something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I couldn't even answer my most desperate question. If I had a friend who had a gun in his home and a history of suicide attempts, was there anything I could do that would help? 
the second lar- the next largest set of gun deaths, one in five, were young men aged 15 to 34 killed in homicides. Harry, w- Justin, would you like to take a guess how those men 15 to 34 died? What were they involved in that might have gotten them killed? Gang or drug activity. They're not church group. Yeah. Exactly. They they weren't on the stock exchange trading bonds and stocks. They were doing drugs. And you know why they have such a violent community th- uh, amongst themselves that causes their death? Drug war. Thank you. So mental health and end the drug war. Yep. Uh, the third subset was 1,700 women murdered per year, usually the result of domestic violence. Uh, so – and I can tell you, again – those guys are going to kill with a baseball bat or whatever way they're going to kill. It, if people want to kill another person, they're going to kill another person or they're going to kill themselves. It doesn't matter the tool. The underlying reason the tool is being used needs to be addressed. Yep. And it means allowing access to mental health in greater numbers and in insurance, having a conversation in mental health, N- you know, not uh, – how about we fix the healthcare system? How about we end the drug war? Mm-hmm. Instead of arguing over something that is a goddamn constitutional right that the court says that every person is allowed to protect themselves with because the government might become tyrannical and you need these weapons to fight a tyrannical government, that's why it's there. Just to scare them a little bit. It's the, A warning shot. It's that's the, about it. Yeah. It's not the tool. It's the intent of the use of the tool that is the problem, guys. Justin, what do you got to say about that? Mike. Sorry, my cat is uh, <laughs> controlling Harry's mic with its ass. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree with everything you just said. I, I, I have n- you know no rebuttal or. Yeah, it's you know it's a tool. Uh, so it's simply a tool. If you've listened to episode one, what is Amanda's story? Go back into Amanda's story. I think it's one forty, one forty one. Yeah. 142. Uh, and so older men who make up the largest share of gun suicides, older men make up the largest share of gun suicides. Didn't we have an older man who just committed suicide by cop? Uh, no, need- he shot himself. He was dead before the police arrived. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, it was, there was, this guy wanted to <coughs> die. Uh, need better access to people who could care for them and get help. Women endangered by specific men need to be prioritized by the police. And enforce restraining orders prohibiting these men from buying and owning guns. And none of that would my, do anything about this. My friend, he, he could have bought a gun at any point through the process, even with a protective order against him, because of my friend. He could have bought a gun at any moment. There was nothing stopping him. I mean, it just, it's like, and, and, uh, uh, <laughs> so younger men at risk of violence need to be identified before they can take a life or lose theirs and be connected to mentors like Rupert at Rupert's Kids who can help them Uh, de-escalate. So it is is what you are being fed by these pro-gun control grammar Nazis is is bullshit. They're they're trying to build a bigger state. They cherry-pick stats. Like they use stats like a Missouri study where they found that if you made a slight adjustment to the – what was it, the Brady? Or they, they made a slight adjustment or they reduced restrictions on guns in Missouri in a 2007 st- survey and found that the homicide deaths jumped 25%. So, yes, I can cherry pick one study one time in one location that already has a pre existing um, high amount and pick the year where there was a lull, fund a study, and make sure that I publish those results and get them out there to try and spearhead an effort for gun control. Yeah. Then I can be like Vox, and Vox took this huge, big study about all different countries, global study of gun control effectiveness. They, now, they make the headline, study shows gun control can actually have an effect in stopping mass casualties. Then you read the story, and the author makes it specifically clear it is against his will that you would use this data in that way because there is no way to compare Australia to the United States. There are more guns than people. There is an entirely different cultural ethic and mind worldview toward guns. There is a history, you know, people, people, are, Australia is a, they're a bunch of criminals anyway. No wonder you, right. take the, you take the, if you took the guns away from the criminals of the United States, there'd be a drop in gun deaths too. Australia is founded as a penal colony. They're criminals. Right, right. Take their guns away. Right. You know, like, but there's, there's no way to compare to, uh, to studies this way. And the debates devolve into research methodologies and then you're nowhere. 
the uh, gu- gu- um, gun deaths still happen in Australia. Yeah. Knife attacks are huge. They're having people getting attacked by machetes. So, like, it, you know, that person who's six foot tall with a, you know, 200 pound, like, yeah. heavyweight. With know, a gator skin hat. Which is ha- way scarier of a visual graphic on TV. With a great, with a gator skin hat, and he's just sitting there going, you call that a knife? Yeah. This is a knife. Which is, like, that is awful. Okay. <laughs> because, <Right. laughs> you know, so, uh, the other thing, the other point I want to do with is uh, domestic vi- violence. Granted, you know, Greg, uh, granted, you, you use the male gender, but domestic violence and people doing that, that's not a gendered issue. It could go for both freaking genders. Just want to get that out there. And the other thing was men's mental health. That is huge here in the United States, actually all around the world, that uh, me- uh, men are seen as expendable. Our mental health is not looked at. No one really cares about men's mental health. Uh, this is the main thing that uh, a lot of people go after things that are meant for like men to have men basically like the like the man cave in people's houses right that's like to perfect god it's a man's safe space right and even that gets attacked but it's just a space that like, a man can call his own and that whole like but men mental health actually going at the most most insurance companies don't care most health things don't care about how like men basically feel men have emotions Absolutely. whether regardless they have it or not and the biggest thing that affects like young men, especially the age group that listen to this podcast, is just the simple fact of being alone. That's why I love the Discord channel because men don't need to be alone. Men needs community. Men need to go hang out with each other. If you've got that buddy on your friends list, talk to him in a few months, dude, hit that guy up. Guess what? He's probably sitting at home watching TV by himself. You know, and he's too scared to make the reach out. So, like, you know, do the libertarian thing and just reach out to an old buddy that you haven't talked to a while. Have a beer, drink some Dasani sparkling with him, go play games with an old Don't buddy. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That will make sure that it, the invitation is declined. <laughs> <laughs> go out, hang out, with, you know, hang out with a buddy. You know, that 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 helps out so much for men's mental health. Find out what they're going after about, and you know, like try to care about men's problems. Lot, most men, you know, they suck it up and keep going. I knew a guy who had a busted hip, and he went. He worked five years on a busted hip. He just kept drink. He was just drinking Nyquil and coffee like he was going out of style, and he kept working with his busted hip. Yeah, I, I've been a, a huge advocate for this since I I had my own. Struggles. I mean, I've been very open about this on the podcast. Uh, you know, my wife left in uh, mid podcast in early 2014 in February. You can go back and listen to that episode where Gina, Greg, and I are talking, and then all of a sudden it was it was uh, February 2013. And uh, was it? No, it was 2014. Yeah, it was February 2014, and like all of a sudden, I just get real quiet, and that's because she's packing her shit up. Greg watched my <laughs> my ex wife walk out of the house. Uh, I mean, I met her. I wasn't going to stop her. <coughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're good. I mean, I know it's difficult, and she's a great person now, but it was one of those things. You know, you can't make a jigsaw puzzle fit when yeah. it isn't you know set to fit well. I. Listen, divorce is the best thing that's ever happened to me. She's very happy. She's remarried. It's all good. We're good friends now. But it it pushed me down a road of self-discovery, and I had to be courageous in asking for help, and I still am. I'm constantly sitting uh, going, listen, I'm a fat fuck. I need a personal trainer. I don't know what I'm doing. I I need I need this, this, this. You know, you have to do things for yourself that make your <laughs> life better. You have to care, uh, uh, reach out. If you're a man, and most of our listeners are men, we love our ladies. Listen, you all know, no one loves ladies more than Dear Leader does. Our men, and I've, uh, I desperately want you to take good care of yourself and start paying attention to your emotional life. Because it is incredibly important. It, it You cannot be a man. And we talk a lot about on the show uh, uh, being an alpha or masculinity in choking ways. But you cannot be y- – you can have your physical being, your spiritual being, your work life, your family life, and everything great and still be emotionally backwards and emotionally stunted you you have to. I'm trying so hard to get through this because you guys are uh, You're sharing memes, <laughs> <laughs> sharing <laughs> memes <laughs> well, behind I mean, the my question, back. You know, the is there isn't enough information to give an accurate commentary. You so there's there's some books like uh, Game Plan, A Man's Guide to Achieving Emotional Fitness, 
Um, I think it's To Be a Man by Robert Augustus Masters. There books like these that, that are really like geared towards men and helping men figure their shit out in every area of their life. You've got to do it. You've got to go to therapy and you've got to say to your wife, to your spouse, to your friends, to your boss, to whomever, I'm going through some shit and I've got to work through this and I've got to go to therapy or I need to talk to you about this. My marriage ended because I was too afraid to let her see my true self. And I was too emotionally backwards to admit that I didn't know how to do that and that I needed help to do that. Now, she wasn't the one that was going to be able to help me, sadly. Uh, but there were people in my life that did push me that way. Greg has been a great help in that, in that way. And your emotional fitness and your emotional life is as important as your financial life, your work life, your family life, your physical life. You know, you just got to – you got to – if you got to balance all your plates. Everybody's fucked up in some way. Yep. Yep. You, every, you, your mic's off, Harry. You, I'm going to take that button away from you if you can't do it right. Uh, I'm going to switch buttons so you have to go like that and you you can't get it stuck. Um, <laughs> you know, just go, go it, it, to your library and look in that section, the Robert uh, Augustus Master Book, or personally email me, editor at We Are Libertarian. Email me at spangle at We Are Libertarian goes only to me and uh, my reading list i've got like 30 books it's on i might give you an inspirational hitler meme just uh, cheer you up yeah I'm exactly back. greg won't Some be much inspiration <laughs> um no i like the art of i think it does a lot of those things. great podcast i mean stoicism is a great uh structure to to follow chris spangle.com i've got my 30 books to heal yourself uh, uh emotionally on the second page of, of that i mean then that's the list that i'll send you if you hit me up i mean you just You've uh, so many beta males are sitting out there and, and uh, just playing video games, watching sports, ignoring their family life, ad ag ignoring the, the things that are keeping them from being successful. There's been so many points where I've thought about killing this podcast because it's been good for me. It's like. I'm going to do the thing that I'm going to do the thing that is bad for me because I'm self-destructive right now. You know, you've got to find those self-destructive points and turn it around. Because if you don't, you're going to be a 64-year-old fucking maniac <laughs> on Luxor Tower shooting up and killing 75 people or you're going to be divorced and sitting at the coachman by yourself on a Friday night assoing young lady friends. Exactly. On trips to Vegas in your Hawaiian shirt. Hello, doll. <laughs> you know, video games are not bad. Uh, if everything in moderation, Harry, is my point. Everything's in moderation. Video games is over to like being like almost a modern novel. A lot of mm -hmm. different video games have an incredible different stories. Instead of most guys, instead of sitting down and reading a fictional story, they will. Grand Theft Auto has saved me from road rage. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> don't <laughs> don't. I'm saying everything in moderation. I'm fat because I don't know that when it comes to food. I ate stacked pickle today when I should have had a salad. I get it. No, there's not but stacked pickle invite. <clears throat> you could, you cannot sit there and tell me that there isn't a large segment of the people in our generation who use video games as an escape from their own life. True, true. Some people do that, but some people do that with everything. The reason I bring it up and came at you at it because you have a horrible history of going after video gamers. Because I think that's generally... Uh, it, it is an opiate of the masses. It it is. So are fictional books, of course. But there's tons of different lady listeners who probably sit there and read all those like the, the you know your your Star dirty books. And Us Weekly yeah. and I, Gray. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm not saying that all video games are bad or that playing video games is bad. I'm saying that it is something that I have noticed, and my female friends talk to me all the time about how they're lonely, and all he does is sit in the den and play video games. Listen, I'm a gamer too, Harry. I play Mario Kart 64 at least 30 minutes a day. I get it. That's a, it's, a, a sh it's a great ex escape. First off, like the, uh, men, men have hobbies is what we do. We have right. different things. And if your girl is complaining that you play too many video games, then say, what else do you want to do? And you will do it. You will get up right. from that game system and you will do it. But if they have nothing planned, it is just a shit test and you probably need to get out of the relationship. It's a shit test. Get out of the get we goddamn need, relationship. We need an editor at We Are Libertarians. We need to bring <laughs> Dear Leader back. And we need to uh, – we'll start 
market problems. You have a, a life problem. Let us fix it for you. Yeah, we'll fix that. We're experts on everything. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's – go ahead, Harry. Like me, like my wife of 14 years. Um, you know, I remember I bought a car from the ju- – uh, motor from the junkyard, brought it home, took it apart in the dining room, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and every – And all you're still her, married? Yeah, I'm still married. And all of her friends, like, you need to get rid of him, da 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 And I was like, no, we're not using the dining room, da 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 And I still got that motor, and I still have her, you know, because, you know, you know her – The chain helps. That's a keeper. <laughs> Exactly, you know, it's like the surveillance system you installed inside of her sort of makes things convenient. But, you know, go ahead. Because like the other thing is like because she knew like before that motor, I was out running doing things. But I've got this motor at home and you had to finish taking apart. This motor I had to finish rebuilding. It's like you'd rather have your kids drinking in your basement rather than out on the town drinking. Right. You know, it's like so if I'm not sitting at home playing video games or doing stuff at the house, it's like, well, one who wants to go out and go do something. I'm not going to be <laughs> up the flies at the pub playing bingo. Yep. Ah, oh, man. Good old Fort Bend pub. I only go there when eight six guys there. I have to have no. I forget the guy, the bartender's name. I only know him because he drives an eight six. So, sorry. Well, I mean, we've talked a lot about mental health, and I don't think even mental health would have fixed this. To be honest, we don't know. So we don't even know that. Yet. We don't even know I mean, that. Yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so far, we just. Yeah. And that's what makes As of right now, there's no indication this that he had Heath, any mental health issues. It's like a Batman Heath Ledger character at this point, and that's right. the scary part. Is it feels like there isn't a motive, there isn't a way to manipulate even his self-interested intentions in a way so he doesn't it's purely there's not one tool we have available to stop him from doing what he decided he was going to do yep. and until we know that it's scarier yes oh yeah this is but really the majority scary. like you know sandy hook columbine um dylan roof in charleston you know these are emotional these are mental health issues and that's something that it isn't okay to talk about but video games too are now social it's not like you're alone Correct. Yeah. So that's why oh, a yeah. lot of men get their socialization. Especially on Twitch. Without having to go yeah. to the bar for wing night. I'm mm-hmm. just saying there's a lot of guys out there getting real defensive about this right now, and it's because they know what's, I'm right, and it's true. No, they're just tired of being attacked. Uh, like, guys in video games got attacked all through Gamergate. That entire meme army is probably probably p- part of this audience who, like, got attacked from that, for that whole stupid Gamers Are Dead article. You know, you know. We game, you know, when we socialize, you know, it's okay. Just we're here, we're queer, we game, get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> two scoops, two games, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two genders. <laughs> two games, just PUBG. <laughs> two <laughs> uh, Listen, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with You're it. You're not. You're I'm saying, saying don't every, let it become an obsession. Everything in moderation. Exactly. It, don't right. let it be what you shape your life around. No, the, yeah. no, nobody is more prone to obsessions than I am. I'm an obsessive motherfucker. That's why this will work is because I am obsessed with We Are Libertarians and it will it, it, like I have I struggle so hard with my work to peel back and try and take 3 hours today to go take my niece to the park and to go get ice cream. Unproductive time. Unproductive okay. waste of time in terms of my career. But I was investing in my family's future. I was mm-hmm. taking some time to spend some time with uh, uh, th- the most perfect child that ever lived. She is great. and But there is a huge part of me that as I'm doing that, I'm sitting there going, I should be at work. I should be researching for tonight. I should be doing this. Like uh, That obsessive part of me is so invested in my work, and I'm such a workaholic that I have to step back and recognize like those things are not healthy for me. I think everybody has that thing in their mm-hmm. life that you've just got to go, i got to get this under control. I am un- unfortunately have several of those things. Uh, but Including the squat, uh, the squat rack lady, so, you know, he's I, always on the squat rack. Listen, I'm on the squats. I, I, I'm getting good at it, though. I could walk this week. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that video – I'm not one of those people who thinks that it's like this mis- not misogynist, awful thing. I just think that it is, it is something that – in terms of percentage, people are more prone to fall into that. Into that way. Exactly. It, it's like my phone. I am obsessed with my phone, and it's very unhealthy. We need I to love think it. about how to gamify our podcast. Right. <laughs> we right. really need to think about manipulating our audience more. That's something I've been talking right. about. Right. The Discord chat has a leveling system. Uh, I, there's a few people in there that I'm going to dislevel. Let We've me tell you, I've been in there. We've already tiered up the podcast. <laughs> Next, we have to start recording badges. Every time we do that, I get in trouble for Hitler. How how, <laughs> how can people get into the Discord chat? Many people want to know. Um, I have less. I have left. Facebook group. 
Um, I can also like tweet it at the uh, uh, the, tw- the Twitter page and the Facebook, and you know, I'll get uh, Chris Spangle to uh, pin it up there, so I'll stay up there for a little longer. All right, cool. So usually, I just post it and just keep going. If you, know? you are, if you uh, let's do the Twitter thing. I'll pin it up on Twitter. We the letter R Libertarians. Uh, if you want to join the Facebook group, we'll pin it up there as well. WeAreLibertarians.com dot com to get access to the Facebook group. I think it's just slash group slash We Are Libertarians. Um. I want to talk real briefly uh, about what to do if you are in one of these situations. Uh, I think you and Justin would have probably some good tips. If you are in one of these situations, what what can you or should you do? Like I watched Dan Bilzerian run back to his car and get his gun and start shooting at the, the, the casino, and it's like – well, dude, you don't know where he's yeah, at. You're just, Whoa, you're just, yeah. you're just like firing guns into people's rooms. It's like that's not he's a Dan Bilzerian. He gets away with it. He, it's so Chris... fun. Like, his, is, that, is that real? His, was he really shooting? Uh, his Instagram. He was accidentally on uh, CNN, and they didn't know it. But Bilzerian to me is a hilarious character, and I was so like I hated his guts because he was and that because he was toxic masculinity. And then I started following and watching him. He's he's hilarious and he's doing it all tongue in cheek, uh, and he's he's very much like us I think in terms of like eh, he knows he's being offensive and no, he knows what he's doing but he's like winking at you while you're doing it. Yeah. The people uh, that like him know they're in on the secret. Exactly the people right. People that hate him, he can't wait to flame the you know exactly fan the flames until they're so triggered they start their heads explode like Colbert over two scoops. But here's a dude who l- literally is partly that way because he he is on stage, the firing starts happen, he starts running. As he's running to his truck to get his gun, he's Instagram storying and Snapchatting, and I'm sure you can find it on YouTube, about a girl that was next to him that got her head blown off, and, like, he's runs to his car, gets his gun, and starts, like, protecting people and, like, starts firing. Like, he's, like, in Afghanistan. I mean, he just is a real crazy character but uh so I- i'm thinking that it that is not the right thing to do especially since i don't have a gun but if you are in an active shooter situation i just don't know how many of these situations where it's a crowd of twenty two thousand people you don't know it's you're probably going to be more like offices or smaller situations but harry your ta- your your tad's tip your harry's tip this week <laughs> it's not going to be a tech tip uh and uh, your your technical, harry's technical. harry's technical tip Tactical tip. Harry's tactical tip for the week. Tactical. Joined and co-hosted by Justin Hutchinson. Flat Bill. Flat Bill. Um, Flat Bill lives matter. Yeah. If I am caught in an active situation, a shooter situation, what should I do? Definitely not shoot randomly because you are responsible for every bullet you let off. So don't do that. <laughs> okay. So if I kill somebody, I'm even in that situation, I'm responsible. Damage to private property or anywhere that bullet goes, that it's you know you're responsible for that where that bullet where that bullet went, you're responsible for it. Got it. So don't do that. Do that. Uh, the other thing is like the tips I like the law enforcement do it be they uh, what is it uh, run run hide, hide fight you know, fight, fight yeah. yeah so yeah the last thing you want to do is a different shoot like that because. Granted, if you've never been in a two-way rifle range, getting in a gunfight is freaking freaking scary. And considering that if you're at a party, you probably have a handgun on you, and this guy had a long gun, so and you lose automatically in a minute because he's got a long gun, you got a handgun. Okay, <laughs> that's promising. Uh, long gun versus handgun, long gun wins. All right. It, it, now, yes, you can you can get someone with a hand uh, handgun that has a long gun, but <laughs> good freaking luck. But yeah. um, sorry, just, just well, with what happened in Vegas, I mean, it, it, that's it's so dynamic because he was so far away. Um, right. Mm-hmm. I, I just you don't. Have I don't no know. Chance to shoot back. Th- this was a, yeah. a, an impossible situation. I Correct. mean, somebody like a sniper like that. It's a lot of a lot of situations where where mass shootings were prevented by a concealed carry holder. Uh, typically, the the gun battle is going to happen within twenty five feet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So, uh, you know, aim <laughs> aim for center mass. Make sure you, you you know you're looking beyond your shot too. Yes, because yeah. like Harry said, every bullet you fire, you're responsible for. So right. if you miss, and you strike someone else, you, you're you're at fault. You're yeah, going to get charged for that, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. you should be. Yes, yeah, as you should be. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is like a lot of the mass shooters that you said that get stopped by uh, like a civilian, like a, a gun owner, you when they they stop, they they, they run, they shoot themselves, right. or they drop their own gun. Because a lot of them are, like, they're very cowardice. Right. But when you get to that type of situation when um, you've got to have that 
situational awareness. Now, when I'm ta- ta- talking about like being on that heightened si- situational awareness all the time, you're constantly thinking about, I'm going to be an attack here. I'm going to be an attack here. You're going to, if you do that, you will tire yourself out. Spent all your willpower, you're out. Right. Uh, but just be knowledgeable of where you are and where the emergency exits are and how to get out of a situation where you are. That takes a few seconds, a moment into a room to think about, if I had to get out of this room quickly, how can I do that? Do and you do that every place you go? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can say honestly that I do. Yeah. And I also have this weird thing where I can't sit with my back towards the door at a restaurant. I do that too. I have to watch people walk in. I cannot have my back towards the door. I never, ever leave myself like uh, a blind spot. If I'm in a restaurant, absolutely, yeah, I can't. I, 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 it came from a movie. I forget what movie it I was. I get anxiety if I've been I've been put in that yeah. situation. I'm like, I can't see. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I can't see here. I don't like this. <laughs> we we got to move tables. Hmm. So, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that. But like, just knowing where exits are and how to get out of that place, because if something does happen, because the likelihood of an active shooter event happening is very, very small. That the exits are that will help you in. A earthquake, fire, or other type of disasters that are possibly more likely. It's more likely that you will be at the mall and a fire breaks out because new fourteen year old on the grill than an active shooter event. Sure. Just, just by statistically speaking. Uh, so, and it's always better to run and get out of the way because uh, even if you do stop to attack, like I said. If you just see someone with a gun and you immediately stop shooting, that could also be someone trying to respond to that shooting event. So pulling out your gun, it, sometimes it could be you know the wrong. So especially if you don't know this is the person that's actively shooting and you don't know who you're shooting at, you know, right? You know, you could be an undercover officer shooting at someone else. You don't know. There's tons of different unknowns. So it's better just to run, and get away from the situation as fast as you can. Okay. If you can't run, you can't get out of this, the situation. Um, you know, hide, hide, find somewhere where you can get, uh, where you can't get to. Make sure your phone is off. You know, don't, you don't want to get eye messages or Snapchats uh, or, uh, you know, or an update because the podcast just downloaded. Hey, you know, new wall podcast just downloaded. Right. <laughs> While you're in that middle of that shooting event. And you know, if it comes down to it, hot, uh, get, you do get ready to fight. And you look at different improvised wep- weapons to, that you can use. Like um, my favorite are sticks, thrown objects. And understanding the difference between concealment and cover will also help you in these type of situations. What does that mean? Uh, most people who play D&D, they understand the difference. Uh, <laughs> concealment. You and your pro video game propaganda. This is tabletop gaming. Thank you. I know. <laughs> I just wanted to try and trigger you more. <laughs> Anyways, uh, starter pack over there. Um, <laughs> it, concealment is something that just hides your presence. So that's okay. that's good because you get out of sight. They can't really see you. So like drywall, this table, your car concealment, your car is not covered. Right. Granted, your motor might be able to stop most firearms, but that's just the that it's they hit the motor and not anything else around your motor. You better hope they're not packing green tips. Yeah. You don't want green tips. <laughs> you know, so your car will get lit up like it's like it's cheese. And if you're thinking, well, he's got a handgun. Yeah, my there's most handgun ammo goes right through cars too. So uh, a water cooler will stop one shot because of the water inside of a water cooler. Uh, a fire extinguisher, that does great. That stops a couple. But uh, drywall, no. Stone, if it's real stone, a lot of different places you go to, they'll have that stone veneer. That's faux that's, stone. That's, yeah. that's faux stone. That's not stopping bullets. Right. So when it comes to, like, hiding, like, you really want to be, like, hidden, completely out of sight, complete concealment, and try to find some uh, some cover. And that's why running and getting out of there and getting away from the situation is one of the better uh, better things to do. Because even if you have the situational awareness to pull out your gun and want it to fight, there could be five people out behind you that are freaking out, that it can't, that does not have the situational awareness, and they're just sitting there. So that guy is trying to shoot at you, and you get ready to strike this two-way rifle range. You may be able to put him down, but he's probably going to shoot those five people behind you. Mm. because they're not running they're panicking on the ground right. so if you have the situation that you even think about fighting you can get those five people to safety and allow the police officers to do what they do and take that and to neutralize that threat right and there's there's <laughs> there's a lot of places that offer training uh, you know for active shooter uh, mm-hmm. with your own firearm and you know i'd suggest for all the wall listeners to look those up and, and mm-hmm. i mean they're they're kind of pricey but it, it's it's worth it yeah and, and, and it's fun it's fun you get to mm-hmm. take 600 rounds to a shooting range. They run you through all these drills, and, and, and you can learn something. And, and I've, I've found them to be very, uh, 
um, very keen experiences. Um, and goofy mistakes that you, if you would have made, oh, you would have got shot. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> we all have bad habits that we don't know about. And teaches us, too, <laughs> so we got that. But, um, you know, you know they tried to go, go around that corner. Oh, you would have got shot. What? Most <laughs> people, I, e- even law enforcement, I don't think anybody's really prepared to deal with, with, with people running around, you know, in, in an extreme panic while someone's shooting. I mean, it's yes. that's mm-hmm. a extremely he, fluid situation. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, you look at this situation, people people weren't prepared. They did, I mean, cuz you can't prepare for that. Correct, you don't yeah. you, you cannot prepare. Nobody can prepare for what this guy put together. I mean, yeah. it just it wasn't conceivable. Yeah. And so, you know, but there are patterns and this guy breaks patterns. That's he's a one-off, but you know, like the San Bernardino office shooters, those are not those are pattern type situations. You can really kind of learn your way a, a, how to how to deal with those situations? Yeah, those people are going postal. But just right. like Obi Wan Kenobi said to Anakin, "I have the high ground," you know. So he, you know, he has the high ground, so he's got a better shot. You know, right. he's firing from elevated position down on somebody, so he's got you. He's raining bullets down on you. You, you know, you're done. Yeah. You can't fire back. Um, the AR-15 he has has the flash clearly has a flash suppressor on it, which it looks to it because you can't see a muzzle flash from it. And if he was using an AK-47, that flash is so huge, you could see the, the Christmas tree light things of that thing. Yeah, no, it'd be absolutely noticeable. Yeah. Absolutely. And if it's a, it's a machine gun, you know, like, well, or belt-fed machine gun, well, usually most people put tracers on it because it fires so fast, and I didn't see any tracer rounds. Mm. Yeah, the, so I would think that there'd be muzzle fire. Why wasn't there muzzle fire? Flash, flash suppressor. Flash okay. Pressure. All right, and, and it mostly be beca- and it doesn't like okay now it con- now flash suppressors don't just let no the muzzle flash you can't see the gun shooting at you it's mostly so if you're shooting in the dark and you fire you're not blinded because you're looking down that sight got it so if you take so if if someone breaks into your house you pick up your AR-15 because this is the gun you would use to defend your house with well, that's what <laughs> I use. <laughs> 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 and you're firing in that dark hallway. So that dark hallway went from complete black to bright <laughs> daylight for a quick second, and you are now blinded. Right. Now, if you missed, <laughs> and that guy had sunglasses on, or he missed the flash because he got a- ducked out of there, you're blind, he's not. Right, So right. the muzzle flash, the suppressor helps that, so you're not blinded looking down that site. And that can even happen even in bright light because of, like, it's literally a flash that's popping up there. Right. So you're not worrying about that. I use a youth shotgun because I can hold it one-handed and use my phone. I actually have an AR-15. I always think about if I had to shoot somebody with a 12-gauge in my house, that's the mess I'd have to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> is that wrong? No. No. I mean, well, you know, cleanliness is next to God. Well, that's <laughs> r- absolutely right. You bring a second shotgun and you give that to him so your insurance company thinks he did it. <laughs> and you always drive with that $75 high point in your car. So if you do accidentally shoot someone, it's like he had a gun. $75. I know. You're I getting ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, this a is high point is basically an uh, apple of the, of the gun world. I'm just joking. <laughs> Listen, more like a Blackberry. <laughs> Greg, the more comfortable he gets, the less I like his attitude. He's, uh, he, and I had, uh, he and I had several moments tonight where we almost fought. Well, you know, gaming is supposed to bring people together. What you find is that you know, it I radicalizes kinda, people. They self radicalize. I kind of like that he got. <laughs> I kind of like that he got. He got so triggered. I like to see passion in our co. Oh, was that a weak spot? Bing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Gamers are losers. Bing. I, I pushed more than this button, Harry. <laughs> Pushing my butt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, let's start uh, the final round of comments. You know the drill. Uh, Justin, you're new here, Flat Bill. Uh, we basically give you the floor, and you get to say whatever you'd like, promote whatever you'd like. And and because you are a virgin here, Harry is going to show you how it is done. Harry, final thoughts for, for this I episode. I will. It's Harry's night. Oh, that, yeah. You're, right, yeah, I'm go. the main co-host. I That's get to right. end the show. I'm the help. Yeah. <laughs> uh, final close. thoughts. I don't know. I really look forward to this getting flushed out because the longer this goes the way it is at the moment, the worse it's going to be for anyone that opposes gun gun control. And even though there isn't any law on earth that could actually do anything to prevent this, it's just one of those times where the cards are stacked against you, you know, for the narrative because it's so easy to hit you with the insensitivity monster card. And so I want this to get flushed out as quick as possible. So that's that's my main thought is there's got to be a reason. If there's not a reason, then anyone calling for gun control needs to 
does need to be reminded that there wouldn't be a law that stops a um, a rabid dog on a leash. Right. Off a leash. And also, good to have Flat Bill on. Usually, I'm with you and Chris Mayo, the other occasional co-host, and we're at uh, Black Acre, offending literally everyone that sits around us until we do our leave. best. Yeah, and this absolutely. is this is like you know, people in for some diversity. Yep. To, <laughs> to have dinner on a Friday night, <laughs> we're sitting talking about how we're going to build a wall around our table and trying to offend them. So it's good to get to have you on for the first time. And uh, yeah, my pleasure. I was glad wait. I could make it. Yeah, and can't wait to have you back. All right, uh, Flat Bill, go ahead. Uh, my final thoughts is, uh, you know, I just I, I want to plead to everybody to don't buy into the left's bullshit and, and don't spout out about gun control on Facebook. You look like a complete asshole. So, you know, just just save it. Nobody's going to come take your guns tomorrow. You know, uh, let it play out. Um, you know, let Las Vegas and, and federal officials do their job, you know, and you know, the, the, the truth is going to come forward sooner or later. And. Don't buy into these damn Facebook conspiracy theories. I've yeah. seen so many already, <laughs> and they're just they're so they're so laughable. And uh, also with that, um, you know, like Harry was talking about with our uh, with his tactical tips. You know, when you do go to places with large crowds, be aware. Yeah. You know, scan the crowd. Uh, if you see anything out of place, you know, you, you <laughs> act on that. Say something. I mean, mm-hmm. I know libertarians don't like to see something, say something thing, but right. I mean, Sometimes seeing something and saying something can make a difference, you know, of one person getting shot or 600. Yeah, so. yeah. don't let your idea, your dogma, your pride get in the way just because, listen, we would, we would have a completely different design for government. doesn't mean that you don't want to, you know, use the government that we have to try and fix the problems that we have. I mean, so see something, say something. I mean, like, it's – you know, if if I heard Harry was going to uh, go postal, which I'm not, he's not. He's a very uh, I I would I would trust him with my daughter, uh, and he's uh. But you know, if I heard Greg was uh, going up to the top of the UT tower to uh, spray a crowd with bullets, I'd call somebody. You know what I mean? I sorry, co-host. Got to reset his autism, right? <laughs> or on a plane trip, malfunction. Or on a plane trip somewhere. You, Let's you say know, he, I stuff. feel he's a danger to national security, and he's on a plane. <laughs> and then I see something, I'll say something, <laughs> and uh, let the NSA know. Yeah. So yeah, I I I just I, I, if you, you all I, terrorists wear lacrosse, <laughs> right? I just I agree. With, I agree with you so much. It's it's just like if you feel something's out of place, say something. Yeah. You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? The, the cops are going to go and have a conversation with that person, and maybe it Absolutely. scares them. You know what I mean? Like, it just – so you're so right. Yeah. Are you finished? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, <laughs> other thing I, I want to do is, like, uh, be careful when you are talking to – like, don't try to get into the weeds with some of these liberals with some of their awful, terrible talking points. Yeah. Um, I saw one going off about how – um, well, you know, the cops, the FBI needs to know, like, how many guns that you do have, just like they do with fertilizer and stuff like that. They don't know how much fertilizer and stuff like that have. Right. People who buy large amounts of fertilizer or stuff like that, those type of bomb-making materials, they don't know. Those are, Most of those things are done by people who feel like this is not like this is not right. You know? Right. Why are you buying so much fertilizer? Where, what, what long crew do you work for? You Sudafed has clearly stopped meth. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, no, yeah. you know what it does is every every two weeks I get inconvenienced because I have to launch my fat ass out of my car on a Friday morning <laughs> to wobble into the CVS to buy my Claritin D, assholes. Yeah, and the other thing, the difference between bombs and guns is that guns in a holster sitting in there, a modern gun is safe as it can be. Yeah, you know, it's nothing like a car. A car is dangerous while it's in motion. A gun in its holster is safe. Especially Mustangs, right, Harry? Yeah, especially Mustangs, man. If you see a Mustang on the road, get, get get out of the way, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're starting up, leaving the car meet, get out of the way. It's a Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> and like and and most of the people, if you are planning to like if you even plan on going to down to the gun show or buying a new gun, I think like next time like a, you know, some of us, you know, get their new gun here in Indy, we should probably take dear leader to the gun show and buy a gun and show him the entire process, show him the form that you have to fill out to go get it. Because most liberals don't know they've never done it. So, like, showing them that. Um, I'm due for a new gun, by the way. Yeah. So, Chris, yeah, yeah. next gun show. <laughs> let's how, go. many, how many you got? 
enough. He's enough. got enough. He's got enough and needs more. Um, <laughs> Have you ever seen Tremors? <laughs> <laughs> you've, yeah. got a, you've got a bulldozer and an elephant gun <laughs> killing prehistoric tunneling snakes. <laughs> you're, not, you're not done until you have that 50 cal muzzle loader. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyways, the... Uh, <laughs> He cracked himself up. He just killed himself himself right there. (laughs) He just, he told himself a joke. (laughs) Nobody else got it, but he was dying. Yeah. <laughs> Gave himself a little pat on the back and I, just went with it. Maybe because I like Bert from Tremors way too much. That's my <laughs> goal. No, you life. are Bert from Tremors. <laughs> Goals there. You filter your shower yeah. water. And then, like, the people who have EDC, your everyday carry people. A lot of those people have stuff on that type of event. Yes, it's kind of hard to get to different events. and So your everyday carry does help out. Like, my like my backpack, my everyday carry stuff is I'm not a medic, but I'm a tech guy. I'm a comms guy. Right. I sleep. Drop, drop, and turn my laptop and all my equipment into a mobile white Wi-Fi station, mm-hmm. and start using that to one get people's phones attached to get them onto an Ethernet connection. Start knowing to get everyone back online, or even starting a server up just to basically just coordinate who's hurt and where's everybody else is at. That's right. what I'm good at, and that's what my EDC is. The other thing I want to go is a shout out to Blade. You know, he's the heart of the group of the Discord channel. If you Get on the Discord. It's really fun. We have a lot of fun there. We're playing Left 4 Dead 2 on Friday and Rocket League. If you guys want to get on, do that. Because, like I said, it's huge about community. You know, that bro that's out there or gal, you know. Because uh, mostly, uh, majority, the stereotypical, like, women do hang out with their friends all the time. Guys t- typically don't. We get into our hobbies. We sit at alone. A lot of guys who sit at, sit at home for some reason or want to take a transmission out of their Mustang by themselves instead of calling a bar and help move the transmission. Call a buddy, go over, help somebody out. We got to get the arms and legs out of our transmission. That's what it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's that's all I've got for right now. Uh, man, there's so much. So much uh, that I want to say. A lot, lot to say. Um, uh, Larry Brown asked why I don't carry. Uh, I don't carry because I don't know, I don't know shit about it. And uh, I respect I respect firearms a lot. And if I don't know what I'm doing, I'm not going to touch one. I'm not going to buy one. Uh, it, and so uh, I'm certainly interested in learning. I'd like to actually what I'd like to do, Harry, is like a YouTube video series where I am taught how to go through the whole process, how to use firearms, firing a gun for the first time, all that stuff, just to document that process for people to see. Mm-hmm. So, th- so they uh, see you got your mic turned off again. Uh, I'm going to take that toy away from you, young man. Uh, so people can, uh, see the whole process. I'm not against it. It's, it's just, uh, I don't, I was not raised around guns, so I don't know shit about them. So I don't, I don't fuck with it. And guns not the only other self-defense weapon out there. Right. You, there's other different things that you can use. Granted, there are some to some capacity and some people don't like, but use the weapon over that you want to get. There well, are Chinese all around this yeah. apartment. Uh, Libertarian. Mean the shit out of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen Reach here. the highest level of <laughs> autism and weaponize it. <laughs> Next to his size and nunchucks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have the documents. <laughs> but the other thing is, like, because like libertarians, and Republicans, they get on this murder porn stage when they start talking about self-defense weapons. Oh, you need this gun at this caliber. Ooh, you can put this big <laughs> hole on somebody. Yeah, get off the murder porn. Okay, <laughs> it's about defending and saving people's lives. That's what this big thing is about. So, so. Uh, so yeah, I never grew up around guns, and to be quite honest, when I was hired at the Libertarian Party of Indiana in two thousand and eight. I remember being at a meetup and going, I guess I just don't really see your your obsession with guns. I just don't get it. And I would I, I was definitely growing up a gun control advocate. I think like most people who are just kind of around uh the world and, and it just but aren't around guns. Uh, I think that's a fairly common uh, thought. I mean, Greg, you, you, you like, and I grew uh, up in the, grew up, we grew up in the same town. Like, all, my, all my buddies have them, and it was just something where that wasn't my hobby, but I understand why it was theirs. Right. You know, I, it's, it's something where I, it doesn't, I would never shoot something I didn't, wouldn't eat. Right. So then, and then target shooting, did, I didn't have an appeal right. to me where I'd rather, you know, I find, you know, I find it much more impressive if I can take somebody out with a three iron. <laughs> you know, if I can fire a low cut at somebody and hit him in the head on the fly, I'm more impressed than with a gun. Well, as you know, in the in the past, <laughs> you know, I'm the John Daly of uh, of self defense. I've had an intruder here in my house. 
and uh, it was James Neese. And uh, as you know, I came around the corner fully nude and <laughs> with uh, one hand uh, over my cock with a uh, 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 washcloth and the other hand with a right fist cocked and ready to go. And that is my weapon. I am. Uh, I am. I'm very full of tea. I'm the nude terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume that, like, whoever I go around, I'll have the element of surprise on them. And poor James about dropped his 72 ounce soda. Uh, so, <laughs> so I, I, I just didn't grow up around it. And mm-hmm. when I started in the libertarian movement, I was, I, I wouldn't say that I was anywhere near I am now. And, uh. Someone at that meetup, as we talked about guns, discussed the Second Amendment and the need for the Second Amendment. And we would be remiss if we didn't really touch on that. The reason that libertarians are quote-unquote gun crazy and support the Second Amendment is that the Second Amendment was put there so that they could overthrow a tyrannical government like Britain. It doesn't matter how powerful – the government is because Britain was the England was the most powerful country in the world. Uh, the the United Kingdom, I guess we should say, uh, was the most powerful country in the world. And Dangerous. exactly, and they lost to a bunch of farmers with muskets because they had the ability to overthrow their government when it became tyrannical. The Declaration of Independence is one of the greatest statements of human freedom in all of history. And world's greatest breakup letter. It is, and it could never have been achieved without the ability to f- defend themselves with the use of force. I- libertarians believe in taking force out of the hands of the government and putting it in our hands. The government is force. The government forces you to do what it wants at the point of either a gun or a jail, s- jail cell. If you don't pay your taxes, you will go to jail. If you don't obey the law, you can be killed or you can go to jail and have your financial life ruined. At the end of the day, government is force, and we as libertarians do not believe in using that force to make other people live as we or others would have them live. And the only way to really enforce that in in society is by having a well-armed society, a well-trained society, not a bunch of madmen running around Because even though I started to understand this principle of self-defense in in terms of not only defending your family, as we talked about, but also defending yourself from government agents who would do you harm, imagine if you had a gun in North Korea. It's why the Nazis, the first thing they did was start to confiscate guns is because you cannot have a tyrannical government with a well-armed society. So I understood that part of it, but I didn't understand the safety aspect and still, until I started going to gun shows. And I was I, – I had a mini panic attack the first time I walked into my first gun show. I was just verklempt. Uh, I, I, I was a little bit scared, to be honest, because you walk in and you just are surrounded by more weapons than you've ever seen in your life of every variety. Everyone's carrying around guns. And it's just very intimidating the first time you walk in there. And then over the course of the day, you see the care that people have for those weapons. You see how they handle them. You talk to people about about guns, and you start to realize you're in the you're in the safest place in all of Indianapolis because there are there is no one. There's never been a murder at a gun show. There's never been an accident at the Indy 1500 Gun and Knife Show. And it's because people take care of their weapons. They take care uh, of uh, of their fellow man and make sure that they are as safe as possible in these gun shows because they respect the weapons and they understand the weapons and they respect the power and force that those weapons represent. And that is the problem of the left. They don't understand this issue. They don't understand the weapons. They don't understand the respect that gun owners have for their weapons. And that's when I really was like, you know what? I totally get it. You you should be able to have whatever you want, <laughs> be you know, because a tank owner would be able to take care of their tank with care. Now, nuclear weapons. I'm morally opposed to nuclear weapons. Nobody should have those. Uh, sorry, Harry. Ugh. <laughs> Another thing we'll have to disagree and argue about next time. But uh, it, it is. It's it's. Common sense. You cannot have freedom, and we cannot start to move 
power out of the government's hands and into the individual's hands without having a source of force on our own. Am I missing anything, boys? Sorry, I have cat hair on my water bottle. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that's, you know, you make the, the point and you yeah. you come into it from a totally different erection and arrive at the same conclusion. Erection? Yeah. He said erection. Did you hear that, guys? He said erection. Freudian he, slip. He's yeah. been uh, sliding hard in the DMs. On that <laughs> Actually, I'm, I don't even want to tell you what I'm doing because it's so offensive. I'm he, making a meme that's going to r- rustle the shit out of the Lava Flow podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it has to do with the suicide note in the hotel room. <laughs> Let you imagine what that might <laughs> Uh, that note might be left. <laughs> I, I've listened to my first. I've listened to my first episode. I can't go on. Uh, I'm just saying. Well, like a, it you, wasn't five stars on iTunes. All I know <laughs> is you put Rod, you, when you listen to Roger's microphone on the Legal Liberty podcast and listen to your microphone. Wow, Roger sounds like he was living in a cave. I know. I'm just saying. Don't right. come at my equipment, bro. Granite Echo Cave. Right, you know, like you know, I, now I like you know, I don't talk. That's why I don't get try to like get into like audio battles with uh, Chris. You know, he knows his stuff. Yeah, everything else. Oh yeah, I battle him every day. But oh, the bikes. Oh no, you, you're right. My bike probably sucks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is. It's about freedom. It is about liberty. It is about maintaining the liberty that we have here in America. And when we have a government as what we have now, which is so eroding the Bill of Rights. We cannot afford to let this one go because the second, the first, and the second amendment are gone, like the fourth amendment, we are completely fucked as a nation. And this this great nation ceases to be the shining beacon on the hill. I mean, granted, we have our problems and we've done some fucked up things in the in the past, but we, as Americans, are allowed to have this podcast. You know, like we 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 aren't sitting here in fear of any government agent invading this podcast as we criticize for years our government. Uh, it, it, it's not that way in most other places in the world. Even in the United Kingdom, they have uh, laws where half of the things said on this podcast we would be we would be imprisoned for because it's in a, Germany all the things we say would already have us in prison. It's not to talk about the Holocaust. It's in, it's offensive or it's not politically correct. We as Americans enjoy many great freedoms and we continue to fight for more and start peeling those back not asking for permission it's it's why it, it just it's it's ours and it's ours to keep and we need the second amendment to keep it and this is not something we can compromise on i don't i'm not going to argue with about silencers or flash suppressors uh, suppressors or or ak47s they're wrong. Their facts are wrong. Their arguments are wrong. And their principle is wrong. Ours is right. And this is a key tenet of freedom. And hopefully after listening to this episode, you feel the same. If you don't, love to hear from you at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If we've left anything out that you think that we need to cover, please send us an email. Uh, I'm talking about philosophical stuff. Like if we left out, you know, uh, long list, a laundry list of gun stuff. Uh, I, I'll I'll listen to it, but we may not read it on the show. So uh, I want to thank our, our. Don't send us nuance. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, don't send us nuance. Like that's don't don't be a liberty Nazi. No, uh, <laughs> well, listen, we want that too. Like here's the thing: it's just to go back and revisit something that we've already talked about. Like unless it's a really impactful, poli- like people people aren't going to get in. Uh, this show is not about getting all that deep even though we go two and a half hours on subjects it's still not like a like if we were doing a gun podcast it would be much more detailed about that issue and uh you know we are we were like the first stop on the liberty train you come here and you hear a lot about liberty and then you kind of like move off into the thing that motivates you the most i think yeah and go either listen to like tom woods or you know uh, or something you know, from reason the survival podcast or whatever so stuff like that so uh, all right, so I want to thank our subscribers. We have awesome subscribers, people who just do so much for us uh, every single day and uh, share our stuff and talk to us on all the various different channels like Discord or Facebook or our Facebook groups. Uh, you guys are so, so good to us. I want to thank our $100 subscribers, $100 a month in the in the, in the the uh, I'm tired of talking. I'm tired of hearing me talk. $100 level a month, I'm sorry. Uh, our super-duper fan, Christy Avery, we love you so much. Uh, Craig DaCosta, you are awesome. Love talking with you. 
I want to give a special thanks to Jason Doolittle, who's also in that category. He sent me an awesome birthday present. He handmade this. It is a it is hand carved, hand stained. It is a beautiful uh, cat wood carving Ooh. that he made himself. Sent it to me for my birthday. It's very. Uh, is that a cat cookie cutter? It's not a cookie cutter. It's just it's a wall art. Oh. So I'm gonna hang it hang it in the bedroom. But I want to thank him. Uh, I want to thank. Uh, I think they're $25 subscribers, so I want to thank our $10 subscribers. Joshua Sexton, Stone Aldridge, Ryan Holt, Joshua Laughlin, Samuel Alexander, Jeremy Franklin, Brian Kloss, Joe Benavidez. 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 Yes. Benavides. Eric Anderson, Sarah Potter, Eric Bartline, David Stovall, Brittany Jandry, Britton Jandry, Jess Nix, Justin Mitchell, Derek Mishu, Mike Tront. Rick Irvine, Zach Felker, that sounds dirty, James Zoldaz, James Darling, Eric Neff, Aaron Herndon, Nick Economopoulos, Brian Travis, Chris Lane, Ryan Clancy, Ken Walker, Rebecca Cash, and David Anderson. And as you know from the last time we did that, that list has gotten longer, and thank you so much for doing that, guys. You guys are just the best. And you, if you would like to join on Patreon and become a subscriber, you can do that at wearelibertarians.com on the right, where it says Patreon, and uh, you, you get... The show, the night that we record it, you get it in higher quality. You get uh, the beginning and end. We leave that on. We don't edit out that part. It's unedited, commercial-free. You also get a bonus episode this week. You're going to get a special episode in the in the subscriber feed of Greg and I talking about Hitler's... Lessons for Libertarians. Lessons for Libertarians. <laughs> Greg, listen to how excited he is. Greg, I thought it was a great episode. Greg, I think people are really going to... No, like, not joking, like... No, all, he's, all kidding aside, people look, are really going to like it. Look how happy he is. It's yeah. like lit up <laughs> Christmas presents. It's like it's the Fourth Reich. Right. <laughs> look, at the, look at those pupils. And we're sitting center stage. <laughs> His pupils are two times its size right now. We, we'd break down propaganda and, and Hitler's methods for propaganda and moving a country in their direction and how libertarians can apply that. And I think it's really interesting. It's an hour long, and you're going to get that bonus content in your feed. And you we shame a, the LP a little bit, which is always, it's, it's always my, fun. Harry loves gaming. I love bashing the LP. Yes, so <laughs> please join, and you will get that. If you uh, join at $10 a month and up, you get the live stream during the show and interact with other listeners of the program. And uh, 25 and up, you get a couple cool posters, which are getting sent out very soon, I promise. I've got them all signed and rolled and uh, almost there and ready to go. And then $100 a month, you get to be on the show. If you want to be on the show, it's $100 a month after two months. So we will, we will have our, our three friends on very soon. To be on the show. So, thank you for joining us here this uh, this week. I don't know if we're doing a Thursday show. Uh, we, we're going to talk about it. We want to see what the news cycle is, if there's other news to kind of uh, talk about. Uh, but we'll discuss that after the show or tomorrow. But if we don't see you, we will see you next Tuesday. Harry and I will be here giving you all the news <laughs> topics. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> see you next Tuesday. I yeah. just caught that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us here on this episode of We're Libertarians. Now, here's the problem. How do we end this? Because Greg's here. It's Harry's show. It's gr I promise Greg will never be back on Tuesday. Good, good enough for me. <laughs> A lens <of> cost. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's doing the Germany. <laughs>